Budget summary and means plan. Okay. okay, we'll call call the uh, budget hearings to order. Nine twenty two budget hearings. Uh, I'll just remind as we go through the hearings, we I've been pretty lax the last couple the last meeting about not being recognized before speaking. We need to start doing that. So then each commissioner, when they ask a question, can follow up. That's my fault. <laughs> we started out, we only had three, and so it was. We, we kept it pretty informal. But after yesterday, I think we need to kind of do that. So that way, everybody gets their chance to get their questions answered. So, but uh, first up on on the agenda is Scott with Weed and Pest. Good morning, commissioners. Way at the back. Uh, I got three budgets. Which one do you want to start with first? Got preference. Uh, we got department in our sheets. Okay. Six fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So that's the weed and pest budget. Um, you look at the bottom there. I actually got a twenty five hundred, a little over twenty five hundred dollar cut to that budget this year. Um, the big cut or big savings was health care. Uh, my wife went to work for uh, Black Hills Energy, so our family insurance is now with Black Hills Energy. So that's where the big saving was in our line item there on personnel wow yeah <clears throat> um it was a big savings for us too so <laughs> it's nice uh and then if you look at my operations i moved some numbers around there and for some reason i had a 32 132 dollars a, a straight 32 dollars in there so i just zeroed that out so there was savings of 32 dollars in there in the operations and then uh in uh, Capital assets, I did bump that up by 15,000 for a vehicle replacement. Um, we got a 2000 Jeep. It actually used to be the old emergency management Jeep that Park Owens had. It's got, <laughs> it's got 130,000 miles on it. It's starting to rust and kind of fall apart. So it's either uh, put money into that or surplus it. And then what I'm gonna do is that my, uh, my vehicle that I drive is uh, 2008 Toyota Tacoma, a little pickup that's got 70,000 on that. So that'll be rolled over in place. And that's what our enforcement inspector drives. So, and then he'd have a little spray tank in there too. And then I just replaced the pickup, the, get another small pickup. So, uh, as far as revenues, we left it the same. I left it the same. Um, yeah, my budget's uh, revenue dependent. And, uh, this year, the Forest Service did have a dip in there because uh, we do have a big Forest Service contract that we sprayed timber sales with. And that was cut by 70% this year uh, just because those KV funds, which is uh, off timber sales, is kind of the rolling five year average. And this year just happened to be a dip. Um, we did uh, write a letter to the Forest Supervisor, the Weed Board did, uh, expressing our concern because even one year dip like that is going to lose a lot of ground on what we gain. Um, over the years spraying weeds and we did get some money back but we are going to be probably about ten thousand dollars short roughly we just found out we got another twenty thousand that they've got at the region so they've been been beating the bushes for money um so we did get a little bit of that back but uh and that so if i'm ten thousand dollars short and revenue then i just don't spend that on my budget side so but next year it sounds like it's going to pick back up and we're going to meet with the uh, forest supervisor and see what we can do to stabilize that funding and get more funding for the weeds and Black Hills as a, as a whole. Um, talk to professionals and as well to try to get a stable funding source there. Okay. Um, the next one is our natural resources management, uh, 616. There's a cut in there as well. Um, the big cut was uh, down in the um, Capital assets. Uh, we bought the skidster last year and then bought the masca masticating head to do our fuels reduction work uh, this year. So that's, that takes care of our equipment. I did put $1,000 in there for uh, chainsaw replacement. We, uh, you know, we cut over 3,000 trees in the wintertime, so we use those, those saws hard and they're good saws, but they do wear out after a while. So that's just for some chainsaw replacement. So you can see $23,000 savings there. Um, I do have some good news on that front. 
federal student <coughs> funds uh, from the Superior Middle School Act was reallocated. Mm -hmm. um, so we're getting thirty-four thousand dollars this year in the Title Three dollars, and we used to be. Thanks, Scott. Oops, I to get through there. Yep. Thank you. And the Title III funds, they used to be pretty wide open on what we could use them on. And then I think back in 2008, they really restricted what you could use those funds for. And those old funds had built up to a pretty good amount, to, I think about a half million dollars. And we used a lot of those on the uh, Pine Beetle fight. But the new dollars, we couldn't use it on Pine Beetle. Basically, the new dollars, was all we could use it on was search and rescue through the sheriff's office. And that event had to take place on the forest. So somebody would have to be lost in the forest. And then the county helped out through search and rescue to where we could claim these dollars. And we kept harping to the congressional reps that you made these funds too restrictive, we can't use them. Uh, so they finally did something about it this year. And uh, if you look there where I highlighted number four there, it used to say to develop a community wildfire protection plans, well, you can develop it, write the plan, but you can't implement it. So now they included a key word there, carry out. So our, uh, our field plan, community wildfire field plan that was developed all back, I think, 2013 was um, updated, but it was adopted in 07 by the county commissioners. And we have shaded field breaks in there. So the work we're doing on the Forest Service now through our agreement to do those shaded field breaks along the county rightways, we can now use these funds for. So instead of building it up and waiting for a search and rescue event, we can use it right now and basically add the savings to the general fund. So um, that's going to be up to you guys how you want to use that because it kind of goes through and describes what you can use it on. But I guess my pitch is that we use it for the shaded field breaks and then that would just be savings in, in my budget. Um, it'd be like revenue coming in and I just save not 34,000 off whatever my impact is on that budget. So, so Scott, with, with what you just said, how much do you think you should have saved up for a, a search and rescue event? You know, I guess that'd be the sheriff's question. You know, I don't know if they have a fund sitting there for that or if they're completely reliant on that, on this, this yeah. funding. I mean, do you know, Julie? They can, they don't have any stored. They just put in a budget and because it was title three money, if they had a search, then they charged us back and they um, could get the revenue back into the search and rescue. Um, so it didn't really per se go through law enforcement. The thing with title three, this title money is we have to have a public hearing and that's when you'll decide there's nothing in the 2019 budget for either search and rescue or any uh, Scott's things because we haven't had the hearing yet. So when you have the hearing and make those decisions, which I'm sure the sheriff will be here for that discussion, and other public can come in and request the use of the funds. Once the board makes the decision, then in January of 2019, we will uh, see how much search and rescue does not use of their budget this year or if they need more for their searches which they'd have to come to the board for that decision so you'd want to make sure you include that in the in in the hearing um to cover 18 overage if the board wants and then we do the supplement in 2019 for what you have thank you so yeah so these funds can build up but <coughs> if you don't use them they'll revert back to the federal government. So, you know, you could use them and then put them in your stored whatever, and then that that could be used if you do have a search and rescue event, then you have, okay. you could use that. I mean, at least then you have it, it's captured to where you're just waiting on a what if. I mean, you know, lines of certainty. And this would also help me leverage the Forest Service saying, Hey, we got these dollars. Let's get some more of these green <clears throat> agreements in place because that's part of the problem. Is they, I'm waiting on them to get us places where we can go. And if I can say, well, we got these Title Three dollars, so that might help 
persuade them to get our agreements in place more timely fashion. Okay, Ms. Chairman, Antark has sorry. a question. Oh, I need to recognize. Sorry. No, go ahead. I'm okay, um, that's why I was talking to um, Commissioner DeSanto about, can we use Title Three funds for like the Fire Service Board and some of their stuff? If you read through. Um, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, you can use it for some equipment costs and stuff like that. Um, if you look at the sec top of the second page. Yep. That's not. Where it says what search and rescue and emergency management, including yep. firefighting and law enforcement, may be urged for using Title III funds. So then it kind of goes through, and I talked to Jerome about this, how they open them up, and he he had some interest in it, obviously too. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So what I <clears throat> what I have to do is I need to advertise. So you need to advertise and do a 45 day comment period. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that here at the first part of July and then we'll come back in September and then have that public hearing. Um, and I talked to Al Schaefer, the, the state auditor about this and about using it on fuel breaks. And he's like, yeah, as long as it's in your plan, he's like, I don't see a problem in that. Um, some of the other uses, it's always good to bounce it off him because he's the one who's going to audit it. Um, but we can, you know, leave it general on the 45-day comment period. He's like, maybe you want maybe to be a little more specific, but I don't, I think you can still keep it pretty broad as we've done in the past. And then at that time, we can have the sheriff and the fire folks up here and have a, have a discussion about it, how best to use it. But like I said, you know, mine, it's a set deal. I mean, it, that, That'd just be savings there that you could then have, and then you could put it into the fire or search and rescue. We just need to capture that money so it's not sitting there unused, sort of say, that feds could come in and take it back because you don't want that thing to build up over time because right. that raises eyebrows in. It's like, well, why aren't you using this money? So, but I uh, just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Um, Every year, it's a question whether it gets renewed. It's always on the shopping block at the congressional level. Uh, the other good thing is Title two dollars that are also awarded. There's probably going to be about 40000 in that. And that goes through the RAC, the Resource Advisory Committee that the Forest Service sets up. And you can put in for projects. It's kind of like a grant project, and I've been real successful. I think everyone I've put in for it has been awarded. So I've used them on pine needle, not just weed projects and stuff like that. I'm sure the fire board or something could use it on something like that too. It's something, that, but it has to be used on forest service property, basically forest service land. Is it Title Two does or Title Three? What's that? I'm sorry, Chairman. <laughs> sorry, just comes to the brain. Um, so Title Two is for both. Those are for Title Two is goes to the forest service, forest service. and they award those through RAC projects. And then the Title Three goes directly to you guys. What's that? RAC? Then Title Three? Title Three goes right to you guys. That's the 34,000 that we just, the county just received here about a month ago. Okay. Thank you. And that's for 2019. I think there's 30,000 or something sitting in there for this year. Okay. Mr. DeSando. So, Scott, what I'm hearing from you is that there's going to be several different departments that could be possibly competing for this 34,000. Right. Yep. And uh, if we distribute the 34000 to you, it's just going to free up money you would have spent anyway that we can yep. redistribute to one of the other departments anyhow. Right. It would be basically a $34,000 savings in my budget because uh, my budget's set. I mean, it's, so it just, we already got those costs figured in for doing our fuel breaks. Okay. So then that'd be a $34,000 savings to the county on your general fund dollars, basically, to what you could do. What you, where, where you would want to put it. Okay. The way I look at it. And Julie, would that be true if we disperse this to another department? Is it going to do the same thing? If you're talking 2019, you've got those expenses in your budget. Other than appearance of what we're using it for under weed, there is nothing in the 2019 budget for search and rescue. Okay. And if it can be used on equipment for county fire, mm -hmm. it goes to volunteers, not on. Mm -hmm. That would be a, 
addition to what his funding, it would help his funding source. It's just something that you couldn't rely on and it's not enough to cover county fire deficit. So you'd still need to consider an opt out for a reduction in his budget. So, but it would be a $16,000 reduction in their budget instead of a 50 county fire. They're 50,000 short if we were able to take the 34,000 savings from him, put it into county fire, then we're only short 16 grand, right? Correct. The, the problem with that thinking is it's not a long-term promise from the federal government. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it would it's help. a Band-Aid. It's a Band-Aid that you would only want to use like on, well, obviously for the equipment that Jerome purchases for all the fire departments. But at a point when you, when we stop getting that money, which it's annually renewed, then you have the problem. You can still use it for that Band-Aid, which will expand the amount of time before you have to do an opt-out. But when you do, and if you do consider an opt-out, you'd want to make the assumption and make it that amount large enough when you do lose that money. Sure. Okay. On an opt-out, if you don't use it one year, it you can use it the next year. It's not like the regular taxes. So if you had an opt-out of 50000 and you had 34000 from the federal government through this title money, you would only have to use 16 of it. But then it would be there when that money went away. All right. Any further follow up on that? No follow up. Okay. Good on 616. And then my last budget is uh, the 101-0166, the predatory control. And that's just kind of a pass through. Um, we get billed twice a year from South Dakota Game Fish and Parks, and that uh, pays for the state trapper. He does, we get a great bang for a buck there. And Game Fish and Parks matches those dollars two to one. So. Um, and that's based on uh, the agricultural census on our uh, cattle and sheep head count in the county, and those are done every five years. So this will be stable through, uh, we just got the whole <coughs> back at May 15th. Um, th those rates will remain the same until October of 2019. So, um, and then that's when the new census will come out. So next budget hearing will have a different number. I don't know whether it'll go up or down. Um, depending when they did that count, and then that would be our five-year figure for the next five years. So, well, thanks, Scott. You bet. Hey, yeah. Is there any further questions from the board to Scott or comments? Yeah, Scott. Uh, anytime you need a little help getting rid of some predatory animals, just give me a call. <laughs> yeah. Got a few pieces yeah, of equipment that work in. real well for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, guys. A little bit ahead. Let's find uh, planning. Ten. Yeah, I like these budgets that go down. Yeah, can't beat that. <laughs> and offer some solutions for the. That's right. That's it. Can't beat that. that. Good spot. Okay, Cass. We got everybody. The ground. Didn't Denny can I ask Russ, can <clears throat> Didn't Denny have Title Three funds? Hmm? I remember Denny always talking about Title Three funds. I think so too. A lot. And then I didn't see him on our stuff, so it's kind of weird. He's raring to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. So I want to tell them about where they can go. Hey guys, sorry you guys get me today. So bear with me. Um, I helped with the budget, but I, there might be some questions that you might ask that you kind of get the deer in the headlights look for a second. So bear with me. PJ's on his way back from Phoenix today. So um, a couple of changes, the big changes in our budget are um, we actually um, took some um, money out of some miscellaneous fees that we had allocated last year and actually re-put it into some publishing costs. Um, that is for 
the ordinance amendments that are coming up, the comp plan advertising for all of those. Um, so we kind of put some more into the budget for that um, to prepare for those extra advertising costs. Um, the other thing that we did is we did um, put some more money into the budget um, for some new copiers um, and also for extra paper and ink and things like that that it will take to um, make those extra copies and things like that for some anticipated committees for ordinance amendments things along those lines we actually did just renegotiate our copier contract um, so hopefully that will help with some of that cost as well um, we renegotiated <laughs> our contract we're looking at getting some new more efficient copiers um, and also um, a more efficient scanner as well to help us save some time um, and be more efficient at the same time. Um, the biggest thing that we are doing with our budget this year is we actually have been um, working with the highway department and with the auditor's office. What we're looking at doing is um, reallocating some drainage fund money. Um, currently, the way that our building permits work is the first $60 of every building permit that we take in, we actually keep um, in planning and zoning, but the rest of it um, goes to the highway department with the drainage fund. Um, it's my understanding that the average in that drainage fund over the last several years um, has been about $125,000. Um, so PJ has actually worked with Tom, um, worked it out where highway will take the first $60,000 of what comes into the drainage fund and the rest will actually stay in planning and zoning. Um, so what we would like to do with that money just by simply reallocating it is we would like to hire an additional plan or two, um, which won't actually have um, an impact on our budget. We won't have to ask you guys for more money to do that. It's just reallocating allocating those funds um, to help us um, so that we can have more people to help the public be more efficient, be more effective. For a that would be for the planner too, right? Yes. We're also hoping that maybe some of that could also go for some new software. We've been looking at some software options and things along those lines. So hopefully maybe with some of that drainage fund reallocation, um, we might be able to get some new software as well. Okay. So Chairman. Mrs. Adcock. Ms. Julie, so did you already change our budgets accordingly on the, because I see the 65,000 on the budget summary, but I didn't know if you had switched um, already that 60,000 goes to, from the 125. I've that? seen that, but. I know I removed it from the road and bridge because regardless of your decision, since it's a special fund, whether you removed it or not, it would um, still stay in his fund and you could just do a supplement or it would build up his reserve. I don't know if they submitted it as... Where that fee is, is we reduced it from road and bridge, but it shows in as a support for the one FTE. Yep. So it's not in your revenue, miscellaneous revenue summary, but it is used, they are using that to support the one FTE. Yes. And you make the decision that the 65,000 for drainage stays in road and bridge. Yes, you can do that. Um, he's taken money out of reserves anyway, so it would just go in there to change that, or we could change the revenue. You could approve the FTE without the funding, or you could approve the FTE with the funding, or not approve the FTE at all, and still switch the revenue. It was by board motion that the drainage revenue, which they produce in their office, the drainage fees from permits? Yes. Yes all come through there and uh, several years ago the board assigned drainage maintenance to the highway department so the drainage fees went with it the entire drainage fee and the balance okay. now in the past um, road and bridge has not used the entire revenue and we have that set up in a special reserve we have to keep 
drainage money separate from his road monies. Okay. So, did you have, did you have a follow up? No, nope, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, so basically, is what the, what you're asking for is sixty thousand from that, and sixty five. And you guys have sat down with Tom and most, of the, and I've it seemed like I remember talking about that before that. You guys have worked that out, so. Yes, yep, okay. we've had discussions with Tom. And so, okay. So, Chairman, it's 65. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was looking and at. And 60 from Tom. Yeah. So would, <coughs> would that need to have a motion, Julie? I, just I think we can address that motion as we see what decision you make when you when you look at new FTEs. Okay. Okay. That's if we want to change the revenue stream, we'll make a motion. If we don't, then we don't have to make a motion and then you can approve or not approve the FTE. Okay. You have both options. You don't have to approve the FTE and move the money. It just means sixty five thousand more would come out of general. Okay. But I do remember some of the talk about the technology too, so that's Yes. I just wanted to make it shouldn't all be tied into just an FTE, but also could be technical. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Cassie. Yes. Unless there's more questions from the commission. Thank you. Was well, that it? We didn't even That's need all PJ. I got. I don't even need PJ. See, he can do <laughs> Yeah, we just have one budget now, so that's all I got. <laughs> nice. You're just fine. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank guess. you. That was five minutes, seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we got a brownie for you. <laughs> brownie points, that's funny. Okay. You have a lot to fill. John? <laughs> you got seven minutes. <laughs> okay. Very good. Let me we'll just find your... Here. Resources in the middle. There we go. I suppose he's towards the. Uh, oh, here we go. No, oh, that's human hell. There we go. All right, John. Good morning, Commissioners. John Morrill, uh, County HR Director. Um, thank you for reviewing this with us today. So, as my first time through, um, I, I did research the, the past several years to, to take a peek at some of the trends and some of the, the money that was turned back in. Um, and I, I think the budget that you'll find here um, will be acceptable. There are some changes, and I'll go through some of those. Um, uh, I did submit a, a narrative, if you will, a memo uh, mm -hmm. that kind of explains some of those changes for you. The first is with regard to personnel. Um, so both of the, the HR positions for the county were replaced this last year as we came into to 2018. Collectively, there's an increase in expense because you have a 15-year employee that moved into the generalist position. Uh, and then you have myself that came in from the outside as well. Um, and because of that, we see an increase in overall personnel costs. And this includes insurance, retirement, work comp, those types of things of $13,000 is the budgeted amount that we're asking for this coming year. Uh, so for a, a change, if you look at 165, uh, 417 was approved for 2018. We're asking for 178, 469 for those same two people. It's just that the, the changes in salaries and then again, the related expenses that go along with uh, with Social Security, work comp, those things also uh, will increase that expense. Um, we offset that actually, so you'll... Uh, Mr. Busker, had you commented earlier, I believe, about seeing negative uh, or decreases in budget. We have a very slight decrease that we're asking for this coming year of about $1,277. Um, but some of that is going to be offset with services and fees, other advertising, job recruitment, those types of things. Um, the services and fees, uh, what's happened in the last several years, we've actually turned much of that money back. What Sandy and I have started doing, and again, Sandra Sortland, the HR generalist, and myself, <coughs> is we started actually conducting some of the training ourselves. So we've, we've conducted, um, when I first came in, we did a lot of uh, informational sessions, if you will, uh, with uh, 
broad spectrum of county employees. We had about 15 sessions uh, to talk about the compensation program that had been approved for the current year, as well as the sick leave programs that we had and the new benefits. It was basically just to inform people about the programs that we had in existence and then to make them aware of some proposed changes. But we also went in and actually did FMLA training, ADA training, work comp training. Uh, we recently had um, uh, Leah Braun uh, from Harney Business Group come in and do some customer service training. Uh, and we do this jointly with the city, which helps, again, decrease the overall expense. Uh, and what's nice about that is they benefit from the same programs. We get interaction. And I think that was the, the biggest aha for me as we brought the city in for a customer service training is there's a lot of similarities in concerns and customer feedback and some of the challenges. But each department sometimes feels that it's only them that are receiving that that negative feedback or maybe um, the lack of empathy uh, and having the different groups here to talk to each other and share some of those experiences was a big bonus uh, that we didn't anticipate. Um, overall, though, we're looking for about a, a $14,000 decrease in training costs, recruitment costs, just because of that consolidation and working with the city. And then again, with Sandy and I doing some of the, the law training, if you will, around compliance and those things for the county, we believe that we can still offer some great training for our folks, but yet reduce the overall expense to the county. Um, with recruitment, we discovered that there was, um, so this won't actually change. When you see the recruitment budget decrease of about $2,900, it's not actually going to change the effectiveness. What we found was that we were being billed for two additional line items with our recruiting budgets um, from the, the local uh, paper, Rapid City Journal. They were doing some banner ads that just were directing people to our website. Uh, and there was some sizable expenses that were associated with that on a monthly basis. We asked them to stop that. Uh, it was another ad that they had been running on a regular basis as well online. But again, it was just referring people to our website. So we asked them to stop that as well. We will have a new contract from them this coming week um, for the upcoming year that we believe will still give us great coverage um, and then also be able to still provide the, the recruiting needs that we have for the county. What we do um, get from the benefit, and this is kind of a hidden benefit, is when I, I met with uh, the Department of Labor representative, uh, Mr. Wickersham here in town last week. Um, he shared with me that the Department of Labor actually views all of the ads on our county website. They grab that information and put it up on the Department of Labor website, which also gets broadcast across the country. Uh, but in addition to that, because we use NeoGov, there was another box that we could check that actually put all of our postings online in other areas. So there's well over 50 different sites that I found by checking that box that we're getting additional advertising for the positions that we have open. Um, so it's been wonderful to see the different changes that were just some simple changes that we might not have been aware of, but will still allow us to be effective and yet have a reduced cost. Um, so overall, the I'm sorry? Oh, I thought I heard a question. I apologize. <laughs> no. um, so overall, we're looking for a, a reduced uh, ask for the coming year of about $1,277 um, compared to the 2018 budget. Very good. Any questions? Commissioner LaCroix, Mr. DeSanto. Um, <clears throat> I've been paying attention past year for travel and conference, and I'm trying to keep track of that and why we're spending so much money on travel and conference. And, uh, Again, this is a pretty large number for two people in an apartment. Um, so what are, we, what are we doing? Yep, you bet. So for the upcoming year, this year we've benefited from the fact that the local HR conference, the state HR conference that we participated in, was actually just in Deadwood. So our travel expense was minimal. Neither Sandy or I spent the night. We, we commuted each day, which saved the cost, and as well as having it here locally. So it really minimized the expense to the county. The one that's coming up this, this next year is going to be in Aberdeen. So there'll be additional travel costs associated with that. And then also two of the seminars that, that Nick had attended in the past, we plan on having a person at each of those. So one is actually the HR conference that's going to be held in Las Vegas this coming summer. Uh, so summer of 2019 and July. Uh, and then also there's a fall conference with regard to NeoGov and how to use the system at its best capacity. N neither of us are experts at NeoGov. We're learning by trial and error, and that's to hopefully help us be better suited with that program as well. 
And you said that there's going to be one of you going to? Yes, sir. Okay. Putting it up for, yeah. Well, that way we can get the benefit and we each have the chance to connect with folks. And I think getting she and I both into these different things will help us also create the network that we need to help support the department. Okay, so both of you will be going to the HR conference? We will both be going to that one in Aberdeen, correct. And the fall conference? The, the fall conference and myself. And the... Uh, HR conference. The HR conference at this point, that one's still yet to be decided. We would both benefit from that. There's recertification credits as well, but it's a four day conference and I'm not sure that I want us both to be gone again for that event. So right. um, they're, they're built into this though, Mark, but uh, again, the goal here is to minimize the expense if at all possible and still get the maximum benefit. The fall conference is how many, the, the HR is four days. How long is the fall? The fall conference is two. Yeah, great questions. Yep. I think the only thing I had to follow up on with, with what Mark says is I think uh, Sandy's got some certification she needs to get qualified for, and, and that was part of the, yes. and this is going to help. Okay. Yeah, you bet. Um, now Jones something. You need to speak into your mic. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. Oh. I feel like I got a really booming voice. <clears throat> Something that's not mentioned in the budget, and actually Julie uh, reminded us of this. I was going to wait one more year on this, so we'll have to actually take a look within the department budgets across the county, and it, it's really be at your discretion. Um, the last time we actually did a staffing review and wage review, it was initiated in 2014, with the study being completed in 2015, and we actually implemented the financial changes to our, our structure, if you will, compensation, uh, was January of 2016. It's like a two-year process from the time we actually initiate it until we actually put it in place. So know that that may be something that we'll actually uh, entertain this year later. Um, but again, the expenses for that in, in its entirety was right around $90,000 when I pulled up the, the yeah. invoices from the prior time. John, I have a question on yes, that. Yes, sir. I'm glad that you brought that up because I think it was, tw like, like you said, 2014 is when they did it and then started, started to implement it in 2016. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some other departments that I'm not going to make, mention no names that come up and said, well, you know, we're still under or what we need to do some work on mm -hmm. some stuff to get things equalized to do stabilize our employees. I've got some ideas on some different stuff to do in departments that. I guess I'd like to sit down. I don't want to really throw anything out, but I think the wage study, my gosh, we, did, we just did it two years ago. We should have had a plan to keep up. Yes, since John's, if I may. If I may, Chair. Go ahead. Uh, when the board um, accepted that or started on that process, they made a motion that it would be redone every five years. So that motion is on the floor. Okay. So you don't need to make that motion. Also in that motion, the department heads will absorb that cost into their budget whatever year. So it's not an expense. Okay. And they can't go back on that. And they won't on a wage study guarantee it. They will absorb it. <laughs> well, that, and when you spread it out among 700 and some employees to each department, it it's minimal Okay. when you're looking at a $100 million budget. So don't let them whine. In a year when I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> but it, we do have a set program, five years. Yes. Okay, yes. so that's the good good news. Right. Yeah, and, and so, and, and John's being new, so he doesn't, he didn't, he wasn't aware of probably either one of those. I just sent him an email the other day because KJ mentioned it to me that he needed to know when we leave that that process However, the five years, however long it takes to get it started. So in 2021 budget, it's ready to put in. Okay. Thank you. And I would suggest you, you uh, do it a different way and with a different company. Okay. Just to get a different perspective on wages because we had the same company for several different times and you just need new blood. And it might erase some of the problems that that we've heard on certain, um, okay. especially certain job titles or job, yeah. like you were brought well, up that, by the attorneys. That insight's fantastic. I mean, yeah. to even consider a different company just to change it up and see if there is difference. Mm -hmm. 
there's a number of different vendors that are available for that. So okay. I've done this with past uh, employers. Um, but yeah, we used Condry in 2009 and then get in 2014. Um, so again, getting a different perspective on that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, we've also begun doing exit interviews with folks as they leave the county. Um, so you heard Mr. Vargo speak about he, he lost a person because of the compression issues that we have. Um, she was very adamant that she loved her job, but she was really upset with the fact that someone that was newly hired was only making about 60, or 60 cents less an hour than what she had after being here several years. Uh, the highway department recently, we've had two employees come in as well. Um, and the, the one I spoke with actually just yesterday said he's more than doubling his wage with the county just by going to a different employer in the area. So he doesn't have to relocate or do anything different. Still doing the same type of equipment, same type of job, um, but he's more than doubling his wage. Um, so there are some different things like that. And within the 911 center as well. Okay. And I think you guys have heard that already too from, from uh, Ted and, and I think from Kevin a bit. But um, there's some concerns there as well. They, they were hard hit with the last study, uh, with decreases in nearly every position. Uh, and yet you guys are aware of the stresses that they face in the 12 hour schedules and, and it, it's a tough position, it truly is. So there's some things like that that are obviously in need of attention. Um, we've had, for example, a position posted for the, the PDL Public Defender's Office for four months now and have yet to fill it. Uh, and now he has a second one he'll have open here in two months. Um, so when we're looking at a, a starting wage of $5,400 a month for an attorney in that type of a situation with a ton of overtime and again a thankless position, it's difficult to attract. Uh, and we've put advertisement across the country for that, different bar associations, different websites, and then through our sites. Uh, and yet uh, we've only had 13 applicants in four months and none of those had either the, the minimum requisition or were people that we wanted to put on our team. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, and, and that, I, I'll have to say that uh, part of going to these conferences for HR is part of it's going to be learning what's happening in our communities and our workforces and trying to come up with strategies to do something different. And that's probably one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, we're struggling with, yeah, I mean, we'd like to just say here, here we're going to be competitive and here's all the wages if we could. Right. Would we really still be any better? We don't know. There, there may be some other things we have to do. There's been conferences I've been to where we talk about uh, more flexible schedules, more, you know, a lot, of, a lot of different entities where you could tear up to get trainees to do, you know, that's something that I, I, I don't, I think we need to have a good conversation about at some point. You know, the overtime is not a, a good thing. Some people like it, but it's not for everybody. You gotta have a life to do a good job. I agree. Anybody, any questions? Good job, John. Thank Jeremy. you. Exactly. Speech. <laughs> John, um, you're doing a reckless job. Hear lots of compliments on you. Um, I'm glad you have joined our team at Pennington County. Um, again, thank you for coming to our fire service board and going around to different departments and actually um, seeing, you know, what everybody does. That's a huge difference. So um, I'm glad you're with us. I appreciate that. Thank you. I feel very fortunate. Thanks, John. Any further questions for John? No. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Looks like we're going to take a short break. I texted him. I said, get down here. That's okay. I'm good with a break. Ten minutes. Already. <laughs> Ten o'clock. That'd be my motion. And the problem 14. is, we've got to stick around because when you get to the other people, you got. Okay. So if we get that low, low, we can't really. Okay, guys. Ten minutes. How much you my motion. Back? Yeah. <clears throat> Moved by just by Hancock, second by. DeSanto to sure. take a recess. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's in your lips. Well, all in favor say aye. Aye. Well, I'm sorry you come up and say so. We'll continue on with the budget hearings today with uh, equalization. Shannon. Good morning. Good morning, Shannon. I don't have 
much to say. My budget is pretty much the same as it was last year. I don't expect any real changes, um, certainly not adding any staff. Uh, we do have some appraisers because we've replaced some older appraisers that have retired over the years. We have some younger, newer ones that are up for promotion next year. And uh, we will have a couple of... Uh, couple of our older appraisers, well, appraiser and office staff retiring, and so we'll, we'll replace those. Um, that's sort of what we've experienced the last several years. Um, I, uh, other than uh, the, the increase in the wages for, uh, for a raise and for those things, that my budget is the same. Okay. Um, I'm sure Mark's got a question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to make, put him. Make you think that, Because <laughs> I looked at his training budget and I, I knew you'd that, like to ask yeah, some questions. Yeah, I want to. I, I just want to know what's the plan for the travel. Where are we going, and how many people are going? And okay, it's a lot of money. Uh, in South Dakota, for an appraiser in an assessor's office to put value on a property, we have to be certified by the state as a certified assessor. Okay. And the requirement for that is we uh, initially have to take some classes and pass a test to gain that certification. Right. Then to maintain it, we have to attend a school every year, a conference and a workshop. And uh, the school is a tested, uh, it's a week long tested school. Uh, we have to uh, we have to maintain that as continuing education for anybody in our office that touches anything that affects value. That is by far the majority of our travel budget. Uh, we, uh, for the size of our office, um, we do have a large travel budget because of that requirement. Okay. And in your office, you have how many total employees? We have 22. There's uh, 15 appraisers. And then uh, deputy and the director, then they're also certified. Okay, so the, the people that have to attend the CE workshop in school are the appraisers? Or are there additional people in the office that have to attend? The, the, the makeup of our office, tw 22. Right. All right. Uh, we have two receptionists who do other things. <clears throat> okay. We have a map tech who's Luann, who, uh, who does rapid map. Okay. Uh, we have Linda, who does the books in the office and then all of the ownership transfers. And uh, a camera manager, which is Deb Grote, who manages the computer system. Okay. Those are the <clears throat> office staff that are not required to maintain a certification. They will occasionally attend education, especially Luann and Deb, uh, but they're not required uh, continuing education. Everybody else in the office, because we touch value, okay. has to go to school, yep. uh, pass the test. All right. So Now, most of our school is in South Dakota. Next year, our school is going to be in Spearfish. Uh, all of our school is in uh, South Dakota. Next year's in Spearfish. Uh, usually it's in Pier. So we don't, we don't travel very far but we usually have to go to pier. And I'm assuming that quite a lot of this $30,000 then in that case is um, fees for the workshop and yeah. the conference, not yep. necessarily airplane tickets and yeah. rental car fees and that yep. kind of stuff. Absolutely. Now, we've got uh, some other travel expense that I'm happy to say this year we don't have. Uh, when somebody appeals from County Board of Equalization to the Office of Hearing Examiners and Peer, there's more travel there. We have to send an appraiser down uh, Peer, and there have been times in Peer where we have spent three or four days in Peer for those hearings. Okay. We are not. This is the first year that I've been doing this ever that I haven't had to travel to Peer. I will miss out on the religious pilgrimage to Peer for the first <laughs> time in my career. Uh, but we, we usually have uh, have several days of that, several appraisers traveling for that. Very good. Okay. Thanks, Shannon. I appreciate that. So, you know, any other further questions? Mr. Uh, Butt? I'm nope. just glad I don't have to go to pier with him anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
first time ever in uh, 18 years. Uh, this is the first time ever I've not had an appeal in beer. Wow. And, and we did. Uh, we had three of them. A tax rep representing the Menards Corporation appealed the Menards store, a bare lot sitting next to the Menards store, and the Dakota Panel, former Merillat plant. Uh, the tax rep has appealed properties for Menards in the past and uh, just simply not shown in Pierre. Uh, writing an appraisal for a Menard store and a manufacturing plant is a huge amount of work. And uh, we uh, had some discussions with the Menards Corporation and they dropped the appeal. Um, the tax reps make a commission. So what they really do is they just hope that if they file an appeal, we'll agree to lower it some and then they make money and everything is happy in their world. Uh, we don't do that. We didn't want to go to Pier and find out that the tax rep from Minneapolis just didn't drive out for it. Uh, so we're happy that he uh, pulled the appeal before we had to go to all that work. That's interesting to know. Doug, do you have any? I think we're good, Shannon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. Yep. Oh. Seriously, that was six minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Shannon. Get back in here. Get in here, Shannon. Me done. I, uh, in this particular department, I'm not surprised by the, the amount of cost. Oh, no, I, I just, I knew it was too, but, but there's other departments where yeah, I, I am surprised. Matt. I mean, I'll both, obviously, you. being in the insurance hit, business, I have to do a lot of CDs and stuff but like you that. Hit on a good part of that is uh, the conference fees, mm -hmm. uh, membership fees are all included into that. It's, it's not just all that you got there. I get and that. he has to send all those people. Right. Right. When, you, when you break it down, 17, 17 people happen to, yeah, let's do that. That's That's a little... A little less than two grand a piece. Yeah. Still, just for my CEs, for the for the twenty I've got to get every year, cost me about eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, motel rooms, you know, are a hundred or so. Yeah. That's cheap if we find them for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Come on up. Never ready for you guys. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Um, I'm Matt Auden. I'm the uh, the president of the uh, Extension Advisory Board, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to speak with you all this morning. Um, I'll introduce the others of our board that are in our that are in attendance today. Uh, Patty Bruner is here. She's our vice president, um, and Dallas Voss is here as well. She's on our board. Um, Ron Dinger and Joyce Bauman um, weren't able to be here. Um, and then Commissioner DeSanto also sits on our board as well. And I thank him for all of his uh, his assistance and guidance with that. Um, our SDSU extension for each of the youth program advisors, Matt Olson and Jane Amiot, are both in attendance as well today. Um, so the extension advisory board uh, works in conjunction with the SDSU Extension um, 4-H Youth Program Advisors to oversee the Pennington County 4-H programs um, and help to kind of direct that. Uh, through June 22nd of 2018, the Pennington County 4-H program has 472 4-H club members enrolled in 19 4-H clubs throughout Pennington County. Um, additionally, Pennington County has 4-H has reached over 2,093 youth through school enrichment programs throughout the county. Um, overall, Pennington County 4-H reaches over 2,500 youth annually, um, spe spending $89,121 in county funds in 2017. So this equates to about, about 10 cents 
of the county funds spent on 4-H programming per youth per day. Um, to help carry out the 4-H programs, the Pennington County 4-H office uh, utilizes a team of over 70 4-H volunteers who have been background checked and receive a minimum of three hours of training per year. The Pennington County 4-H volunteers volunteer an average of five hours per week, which equates to over $400,000 $400, um, of value to Pennington County 4-H program. A recent study through Tufts University found that the benefits of being involved in 4-H programs are immense. When compared to their peers, youth who are involved in 4-H programs programming are four times as likely to make contributions to their communities, two times more likely to be civilly active, two times as likely to participate in science programs during out of school time, and two times more likely to make healthier choices. For our 2019 budget request, uh, the Extension Advisory Board has worked to follow the guidelines that were set forth by the county. Um, we believe that we've prepared and presented a, a fiscally conservative yet realistic budget um, based on the existing services, programs, and current employee counts. Our total 2019 budget request comes in the same as the approved 2018 budget at $90,528. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Matthew Olson with SDSU Extension 4-H Youth Program Advisor to uh, review the major changes in the line items of the budget and answer and answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Matthew Olson, 4-H Youth <laughs> Program Advisor in Pennington County and also serve as the Department Head for the Extension Office. As Matt mentioned, our overall budget came, comes in at the same request we had for 2018. I just wanted to over, go over the individual line item changes just so you're aware of how we're um, changing it this year. So we had just about a 1% increase for our staff salary increase. That's for administrative assistant. Um, that was based on the step increases that our assistants to receive this coming year and also a possible step increase that they could receive. So that comes in about $415 more than last year. On the line items uh, for contracts, which is our uh, the cost share that Pennington County pays to SDSU Extension for our second 4 h program advisor, that's Jane Amiot, that went up 3% this year, so that was an increase of $583. And to make up for the increase in our staff salary and also the increase in uh, Jane's salary, we reduced our shredding by $50. And then also our main decrease um, was in our uh, mileage, that's for our state vehicle. We decreased that $980, and it, it's not that we're traveling less, it's that we're paying less per mile for use of the state car. So it used to be that we would um, reimburse the 4-H advisors individually at, I believe, 42 cents a mile, but the state car costs 33 cents a mile. So we're actually able to do more traveling for less cost. So those are our major changes in the line items for this year. Um, so there's our total budget again request is $90,528. So is there any questions for us? Oh, thanks, Matt. Ms. Hadcock? Um, I've said this since I've been here and I was on the diversion programs and this is a positive diversion program that's only going to be um, beneficial um, to the kids and the youth uh, for, for future years. So. Um, I'm in agreement with the 4-H in every sense of the word because it's just, it, it's an awesome, awesome place to go for kids and learning. So thank you for all you guys do. You're welcome. Mr. Chair, Mr. Zetto. I'd also reflect that sentiment as well. I think that it's a great program to keep our youth busy, keep our youth educated, motivate our youth, um, you help keep them focused on the, you know, the primary income source in, the, in South Dakota agriculture and getting them involved in different programs and stuff that, that lead them down that path as well. And, um, and I do want to say that uh, after sitting and working with the extension department, the, these guys, they really watch their, 
their pennies. Um, and I'm not talking dollars. I'm talking they're watching their pennies. And I appreciate that greatly. So thanks, guys. David? No. Um, it, well, money well spent. And it's a shame we have to spend millions of dollars on catching the bad guys and doing something with them. And we can't afford to give these people a lot more money. That's, that's what's too bad. I think you, you guys got the consensus the commission appreciates what which, mm -hmm. which you guys do. And, and I think you, every member up here has been a part of your guys' team at one point in time. And so they all know how important hard work you guys do, and we appreciate it. Mr. Chair. Mr. Sir. I'll add one more thing to kind of go along with what Ron said. And I told Sheriff Tome this the other day. Programs for our youth, I can't stress the emphasis that that we need these programs for our youth because when we set these these roots and these foundations we're going to help avoid problems in the future with those kids and and uh, sheriff tome agreed that once they become adults it's a lot more difficult to turn them the other direction and so if they have direction as a youth and feel cared for and feel like there's something for their lives that's important then, the, you know, as Matt pointed out, um, two times more likely to, to do those things. And, and uh, I mean, can't, can't emphasize it enough. We, we need more programs like this that are focusing in on our youth and going to our schools and working with them at the schools and stuff like that. So, again, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Uh, we now we've come we to other? a point. Outside with us. We're going to be back at eleven thirty. May want to have Julie go through. That's the that, I was just. Time. I was thinking. Wait, does the board would they like to hear from Julie? Would she brought her stuff up? Sure. Yep. I'm just so excited. Julie Pearson, Pennington <laughs> County Auditor. Um, I've done some preliminary projections for the board and provided you additional information as well as to Holly for the record. Um, what you have in front of you, we all know I love my colors, so we have yellow and purple. What you have is a means of finance and for each color and a new budget summary. I've taken into account on both of these the changes that were made, uh, elections had one, Barry submitted a slight reduction from those questions. We've got the new one from Roden Bridge, as well as um, commissioners submitted theirs for a, a change in insurance. Elections, I actually took out 58,000 because we were going to buy more electronic lap pull books. Um, that's changed health and human services. Um, juvenile alternatives was already changed um, earlier in the, in the discussion due to an input error. So those are the changes that were made from hearings and budget corrections to date to the original submission of the draft one. What I did um, on the, uh, let's go through the purple one first, which is I went through and made an assumption that you, so I could get a range to to meet um, what I'm perceiving as, an, or recommending as a, as a budget goal. The purple one is not including any new FTEs. This would be the bottom of the request. And to balance to the, what's driving this budget is to balance to a 19% goal, which is in column L, Five, column L, row five, that 19% reserve. To do that, we would need um, budgets to go in, department heads to go in, and then if you pull your budget summary, I added columns T and U, and what that does is that tells us how much of a tax burden cut the department would need to make to bring us down to 
the night to bring us up to the 19 percent. The departments, I think there's just a few assumptions that I've made. If we have static contracts, predatory animal control, it can't take a reduction. It's all taxes because we have a contract. Uh, everything else can can make a make a reduction. Um, and I carried it through most of the funds unless they're fully funded by a grant, including road and bridge, county fire, so that everybody is taking this reduction to their tax burden. So, um, which then gives us to the adjusted budget, which takes the tax burden cut off of column O. So with that, if you add no FTEs, to bring reserves to 19% in all funds, we would need to make, have the departments make the following cuts. And here's the caveat with the way the motion needs to read. Without decreasing any existing programs or program revenues, which means we have to make efficiencies within our department. We can't come in and say, yep, I'm gonna cut the wall satellite, I'm gonna cut uh, the security. And you can't say, yep, I'm going to cut this program. And it also cuts revenue because then we're back to having everybody else decrease more. These are minimal reductions. It's not to their entire budget. It's just to how much taxes, which gives benefit to those departments that can bring in other money. But that's where their money comes from is taxes. Now, if you look at the yellow set means of finance. This includes all of the FTEs to give you the range. Um, and to if you add all the FTEs in and their subsequent revenues, you would need to make a 2.55% tax cut, tax burden cut to the budgets, which is what the yellow budget summary does. So that's your range and you see it brings your reserves up to 18.99 or 19.01. So that tells you your range. So your decisions that you need to make are how much, if any, of the new FTEs you're going to approve, which is going to be at a later date. Then, uh, this is my suggestion, your motion to across the board cut of the amount between the range that we need when you're done with all your decisions without decreasing existing programs or any program revenues. That means there's more efficiencies. There's less padding, if you will, in the budgets. We try and institute something that will save us money. We don't order that one extra box. I mean, we're talking small dollars when you're looking at almost a $100 million budget. We set reserve goals to 19% by the end of 2019, which the range of these does that. We are not using an either one or in draft one, we are not using any stored CPI dollars. It's not growth because growth can't be stored anyway. It's just CPI dollars. Depending upon what you add in and what percent of cut we make, if you have all of these others, the no new FTEs and 1.7%, 1.75% tax burden cut would lower your all county levies by $4.70 per 100,000. If you approve the yellow set, which is the maximum that we would need if you add all the FTEs in, you would be, um, Reducing it five dollars and thirty cents. Have I got those? And thirty. Numbers? I've got no five dollars and thirty cents because you're making a larger tax burden cut. Even though you're adding things in, you're balancing it out to make a larger tax burden cut because we're also affecting all the funds. <clears throat> if general has to do it. They all do. So that's just kind of as you go through and you make your decision on how much. Then when you approve a provisional. We can approve it with these caveats if the board wants. You can make more of a cut, you can make less of a cut, you can change your reserve, but this is kind of how these examples, to give you the best information 
to not use stored CPI. If you want to, to build reserves up, you can include that in your motion, that we make a further reduction, or we use stored CPI to make it from 19 to 20. Or, or we use stored CPI if you want to you to um, pay for the new FTEs. So you have, I think, all the information with the draft one means of finance and these two. It gives you the range of where you need to go after, when you're at your last hearing and you've made all your cuts and, balance and, and um, additions. Both of these like I said, have the, the reason there's such a reduction, we used to be over 100 million, and now these both budgets are less than that. I'm not sure exactly what Tom project change he made, but he's not implementing that through county funds. So he's using less reserves, which is worth the $6 million. Both of these new budgets are less than last year's now with the reduction of that six or seven million that he's getting someplace else with either one of those. So Julie, bottom line, well, I appreciate you doing this because now we got, just like as we started out with the board meeting, setting the starting point, this was our starting point in the purple, right? With no employees, just the way it was set. If you want to, meet the qualifications that um, you have a 19% goal. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you don't approve any and you want a 19% goal, not use any stored CPIs, you need to do the 1.75. Yeah. At the most, if you add them all, you need to cut 2.25 if you still want the 19%. 2.55. 2.55. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair. Good. My question is, is when you talk about reducing levies $4.70 per 100000 um, so what you're talking about is that each taxpayer that has a house that's worth $200,000 is going to save a total of $9.40 up to the, on, on their tax bill. Yeah, depending they'll upon have, where the range is. They'll actually see that reduction if they don't get reappraised. If there's no reappraisal. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. and depending on what the schools and the city does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They will see it in the county. If your value does not change, you would see those reductions between those ranges because you're not using store p stored CPI. Okay. All right. But does that happen? No. <laughs> Honestly. Mine went up. They weren't even out there. <laughs> So, you know, I don't know what their cycle, and there are areas that they, I think they reappraise the entire county, county and every four or five years, something like that. So, and even if we didn't do that, the state would come in and raise them all up so that the schools are all equal anyway. School levies actually went down. Unless there's a new opt-out, all levies should go down for every taxpayer if your value stayed the same. Because the cities and the fire districts, they all have more value mm -hmm. to spread the same dollar amounts on. And our value went up more than the CPI. That's what causes it to go down. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. That's a good budget. and um, Good ideas. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. Is that, is that young lady out there? Are you waiting for something? Yeah, I have supervisors coming, but if you're ready for me, I can go. I'm with the Pennington Conservation District. Uh, well, um, we got time if you want to do it, but if you want to wait for your supervisors, I'm not the boss. So. <laughs> <laughs> Where? I lost my sheet. Do you want to be ready to agent with others? <laughs> We have that in here. Oh, this Paul? is oh, yeah. the list of. Do we have the information on the outside? Uh, where's organized, organized, outside? organized outside? Okay. Outside agency. Yeah. yeah. Outside. Okay. Outside organizations. Yeah. yeah.
we'll wait a few minutes. That'll give us a chance to kind of review a little bit, too. Okay, thank you. And remember, we need to call George when you start the outside agencies. Oh, yeah. Or probably recess for a little bit. Um, what's our schedule for that? Then? 11.30. Wow. <laughs> Want to recess until 10 after? Will that give us time to get a hold of George and get him all set up? See who's here by then. Yeah, then we still got to wait for it because everybody else has been told. Yeah. 1130. 1130. Yeah. Yeah, I was told 1130, but it was still 30 minutes early, so. I told him to come early. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I can wait. Matt did very good. People coming in this uh, We might be able to start a little early. They're, we're gonna have some come. I didn't. I didn't recognize Matt because he didn't have his hat on. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> always got his odd. He's always always advertising his ranch. That Matt is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so consensus is where I think we're gonna have to wait. At least till quarter after. Then we should have a pretty good group here to start. Quarter after. So let's let's go ahead and take a recess to eleven fifteen and then Joan can start get trying to get a hold of George. Mr. Faraby. Try at least twice. And pretty good. Uh, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded to recess to eleven fifteen. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. George Canaris? Yes, I can. Okay. You've got a little bit of a background noise, George. Hello? You've got a little bit of background noise, like water's running or something. Okay, well, I quit. I was just wash I was outside and washed my hands. Okay. <laughs> I'm away from the sink. Go ahead. Okay, we're going to come out of recess and start on outside requests. Uh, I think we agreed. Does anybody want to go over the mandated request? Those are the mandated that are at the top of our list. That's our insurance, our deductibles. I think we're all pretty good on that. Okay, and we're going to switch those around next year. So that bring us up to the 044, which is the mental health center. And so I'll recognize Alan Solano from Behavior Management Systems. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commission members, I appreciate the opportunity to come in front of you today. Um, Behavior Management Systems, we're the community mental health center that uh, covers 10 counties in western South Dakota, and we've had a long-standing uh, partnership uh, with Pennington County to provide, I think, quite a broad range of services um, for the residents of Pennington County. We're coming forward to ask uh, for the same dollar amount that we had received uh, actually in the previous years, which is 100948 And what those services do is help us to uh, to provide services for uh, individuals that are low income or indigent uh, that live in Pennington County. And I believe you all, I, I hope that you all have a copy of the letter that we'd sent. And just some of the numbers that come from that is you can see that 67% of the folks that we serve out of Pennington County have a family income. So this is a family income of less than $20,000. Um, the other thing that we do uh, that I think becomes very important for the county. Um, we utilize um, uh, some of our staff to do medication assistance. And where that becomes important for mental health is that um, some of the psychotropic medications can be extremely expensive. So it's not unusual for that to be $1,500, $2,000 for one prescription and a person may be on, on, on multiple medications. So we work, we have our staff work with the pharmaceutical companies 
these are for the uh, indigent residents uh, in Pennington County to provide uh, lower cost or free psychotropic medications. And, and you can see this bulleted in the, the letter. The value of that in the free or reduced uh, psychotropic medications is $142,000 per month. That's a per month, not an annual, but a per month um, savings. Without us doing that, what we likely would end up seeing is more folks coming to the county for um, indigent services and asking the counties um, uh, to, to help cover those costs uh, directly. So I see that as, a, as, a, as an advantage. The other thing that we've done in partnership with the county is to establish the Repsi Crisis Care Center. And you can see there's over 2,000 uh, people that have um, been served by the Crisis Care Center in 2017. The big advantage there is diversions. And so about 2,100 of those individuals were diverted from either needing um, inpatient services through the behavioral health at regional uh, detox or jail services. So again, I think that's a great partnership between us and, and the county and, and law enforcement um, in Bennington County and Rapid City. The last thing I just want to touch on is the growing need. And maybe it's is maybe not as much of a growing need, but the identification and services of individuals. Uh, year over year, I'm looking at May 31st of 2017 to May 31st, 2018, give you an idea. Adults with severe and persistent mental illness. Uh, we've served uh, in Rapid City, uh, we've seen a 20% increase in the number of clients served year over year when I look at those months. For children with severe emotional and behavioral disorders, this again is out of our Rapid City Family Pathways Program and serves uh, the Pennington County uh, area. Uh, we've seen a 42% increase in the number of kids served year over year. And then lastly, the number of individuals that we've served with our certified nurse practitioners and our psychiatrists for that medication evaluation and management has gone up 33.7% um, year over year. So we're seeing uh, certainly growing demand uh, for mental health services. Look, uh, we certainly ask for your consideration to continue our partnership in, in serving the folks of Benedict County and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Alan. Does the board, the board have any? Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Alan, we're looking at, uh, it sounds like to me, some increased Medicaid expenditure in the state. You sat on that board. Um, how much money is DMS getting from that? So not, uh, I would, the Medicaid uh, that change that has happened is not specifically a Medicaid expansion, meaning there's no, what's happened is no, there's not gonna be another individual that is qualified for Medicaid. Uh, so the Medicaid roles have not expanded. What's happened is that the, um, the state who historically had provided Medicaid uh, drug and alcohol services to would be adolescents and then pregnant women um, was the, uh, limited. So that's, that's who they would cover with Medicaid drug and alcohol services services. That's expanded now to other adults. Our services are for, what we do in drug and alcohol is for pregnant women. So I don't anticipate that we are, we're going to see a change in that uh, again, because that's that's the target of the population that we were serving. So you'll see no increase in funding? I, I, no, I'm not anticipating it. I, you know, I'm going to, where, where we need to, where I'm going to be watching is in the low intensity residential where right now we have that service for for the pregnant women and women with young children that service is historically not a medicaid eligible service we receive what we receive out of that is 100 percent state funding so the funding that we receive for those individuals is 100 percent state general funds so I don't think we would see any additional revenue. It w could be that would we see a mix to where instead of the state paying 100% of the cost, the state pays 42% and the federal feds pay the 
58%, which is, I think, the FMAP right now. Okay. But yeah, I'm not anticipating, uh, Mr. Sure that we see a, a revenue increase because of this for behavior management system. But possibly an additional, the state may kick in some additional funds specifically for that purpose so you won't see the revenue it'll be kind of a reimbursement type of thing what it would be is be a shifting to say so let's let's say it's right now i'll just use a dollar amount let's say it's a hundred dollars that we're reimbursed so we receive that in revenue right now for our low intensity clients mm -hmm. that one hundred dollars would be 100 percent general funds so that's all state general funds gotcha what would shift is the potential that that maybe becomes $42 of general funds and $58 of Medicaid um, spending authority, I think is what they call it. Yeah. Okay. So, so not a, it, for us, we're not really going to see anything. It's just going to be, uh, you know, from the state level, what, what pot in a sense that they, gotcha. they're taking their monies on. All right. Thank you. So, Chairman. Ms. Ms. So, the bottom line is, you being on that committee and what you've done is you haven't added anything to your budgets from it. You've actually just switched it from from the feds could be paying more of it, the forty two percent if that's what it is, and you guys are the sixty. Uh, uh, George, if you have a mute on your phone, can you hit mute? We're getting a lot of feedback. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm having a really, really hard time hearing you. Really hard time. Well, you're getting a lot of feedback from your phone. So, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I'm just wondering, with you being on the committee and, and the things that you were doing on there to make sure that, you know, it's, so, it's yeah, about where if it's I, at. And if I can explain that a bit. So, so legislatively... The legislature provides through statute authority for state agencies to write rules. Right. And so there becomes confusion, like on the Rules Review Committee, which I participate on. Um, we have to be very careful on that committee that we're not having a committee of six uh, outvoting or changing what a legislature of 105 has decided. So the law gets passed that allows for the writing of the rules. And on the rules committee, our responsibility is to ensure really two things. One, has, is, are the rules that are being written, are, do they fall within what the legislature has granted that agency to do, through, basically given statutory authority for that agency to do? So if that answer is yes, the second thing that we need to look at is did the state agency follow the, the correct rules review process. That's a posting process, it's a collecting of public input, taking that public input and, and moving it forward. If those two things are met, at least for me personally, I look at that and say, we have to be very careful because if I disagree with the statute that was approved, <coughs> my inkling may be to say, well, I'm gonna vote no on that, but then that's basically saying a committee of six gets to decide for a 105-person legislature. And to me, that's a dangerous precedence to create. And so in this particular um, rules review, there was clear, it, for me, when I read the state statute, there was clear state statute that allowed them to write the rules for the people that are out, for the services to be reimbursed under Medicaid and they clearly went through the appropriate rules review process. So it really wasn't about an agreement on the statute. Right. That's See, already in place. You guys couldn't really change that nope. because of the legislature. You could be on the committee, but it, yeah. it still had a clear yeah. understanding through the legislature that this is what was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So if I don't like the statute, I need to bring a bill and change the statute. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Al. Is there any further questions for Mr. Solano? Thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Community health. Tim.
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Steph Trader. I'm the CEO for the Community Health Center of the Black Hills. I want to thank you guys for taking the time again to uh, and for your ongoing support the Community Health Center. We are uh, the uh, Community Health Center for Pennington County area, for the Black Hills area. Um, uh, we have been in existence since the mid-80s. We are essentially basically the primary care safety net, whereas Alan has taken on most of the mental health sort of things. We take on basically the medical and the dental side of things and provide that safety net. So um, we are again requesting, so I hope you guys have the letter, uh, the same amount that we were requesting last year, $100,000 and 400, 400000 um, equal to the amount that we'd asked for last year. Uh, last year, we served uh, close to uh, uh, 13,000 patients, just a little shy under 13,000 individuals. Um, most of those patients are low income, uh, roughly about uh, a third of those are uninsured individuals. Uh, and roughly about 30% of the patients that we see are actually below the federal poverty line. So uh, we saw uh, uh, close to uh, 1,200 homeless patients uh, somewhere in there. Um, we run, operate three separate clinics. We have our main clinic that's at 350 Pine Street up in North Rapid. Um, we've got a school-based clinic at, uh, housed in uh, General Vito Elementary School. And then we've also got uh, some outreach clinics that we do uh, uh, specifically targeting uh, the homeless population. So we've got one in the men's shelter at Cornerstone. And we do some outreach into the women's shelter and uh, into Wavy as well. So, um, And our goal is obviously to uh, try and uh, keep people from going to the emergency room. And, uh, and to keep them from being hospitalized um, and to keep them healthy. Um, uh, most of our uh, patients that come through our they are, have chronic illnesses, diabetes, hypertension, uh, 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 mental health illnesses, uh, all those sort of things that uh, they're on a lot of medications and, and they require some frequent, uh, constant sort of uh, contact. Our average patient comes through our clinic uh, two and a half, three times a year. Uh, so uh, they generally have some illnesses that they're dealing with. Uh, one of the big things that we've been able to do over the last year, um, I think probably since I've talked to you guys in the last two years with our new building, we added a, a pharmacy to our clinic when we built our new clinic a couple of years ago. Um, and right now we're we're filling about, let's say probably about 50,000, we're probably on uh, track to fill probably about 50,000 scripts over the course of the year. Uh, and we're able to provide some of those medications at uh, pretty affordable costs for our patients, $5 on med medication. Uh, and we find that that's huge for our patients, for our diabetes patients, you know, trying to get onto diabetic meds, which can be pretty expensive. Uh, just like Alan was saying, a lot of our patients are on multiple meds, eight, nine, 10 meds. And so we work really hard uh, to try and uh, identify a lot of the other um, uh, psychosocial issues and things that, are, uh, that can impact a patient's health. Uh, whether it be transportation uh, to get to us uh, so that they can see their provider. Uh, we do a lot of work in terms of what we call med syncing, so making sure that simple things like uh, if you're making it in to see a uh, provider to get all that, we want to make sure all of your scripts, uh, all of your prescriptions, if you're on seven or eight meds, let's see if we can't get them so that you can get them all filled at once. And so you don't have to make multiple trips to come in, and so we can increase some of the compliance and issues with that. So, um, uh, we uh, employ about 80 staff uh, within our clinic. Uh, um, and uh, um, the interesting thing is, is that uh, roughly about 21% of our patients uh, uh, have a, a mental health diagnosis as well. And so we're in the process right now, so hopefully here in the, in the next few months by this fall, we're planning on adding an expansion to uh, uh, increase basically our mental health capabilities because we realize that, and we see what Alan's doing over in his area, uh, we need more mental health integration within a primary care setting. Uh, because a lot of our patients do have a mental health uh, diagnosis. And so uh, we're hoping to break around on that this fall and to kind of expand some of what we're doing internally, mental, mental wise. Um, again, appreciate all of you guys' support, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Does anybody, Chairman? Mr. Uh, Mrs. <laughs> Hancock. Can you explain your general fund? If you look in 2017, you had 250, then you spent 150, you had 100,000 returned. Um, looks like you're returning money based on your budget. If you, do you have the paper? I don't have it right in front of me, no. No, 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 no. I'm on the wrong yeah, one? This is, this is not their budget. On the Sorry, budget. that doesn't belong to yeah. them. Okay. I'd be happy to answer any questions <laughs> on that budget. Though, so. I'm looking at that going, wow, you, uh, if you need 200, oh, huh? you're getting back. Well, I thought it was kind of crazy looking at that. I'm like, okay, sorry. 
<laughs> that was kind of a crazy looking buzz right there. Yeah, that's you mistake. gave back a hundred thousand, Jim. Wow, you're doing great. <laughs> I lost a sheet of paper and apparently I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Glad we go. Okay. Um, nope. <laughs> 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 I thought you were uh, giving back a lot of money for what you did for your budget. So. Okay. Any other questions? No. Tim, I think you guys are doing a good job. I'm looking forward to the 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 wing, the mental health wing opening up and and the collaborations that will come with that. Thank you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you. I kind of bypassed the fairgrounds, I guess. I should have had them first, but I felt they needed to wait a little bit. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> oh, nice. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I've got a really, really horrible connection. I almost couldn't hear anything that Tim was saying or Lana was saying, can you have the gals, uh, I'll hang up, and you can try it one more time? We can do that one more time, but also on your phone, look for the mute. Look for the mute, because that will help you out. I, I did, and that didn't make a, almost no difference. Uh, I, we didn't, I could still hear you the whole time through, but look on your phone. Or we'll have her call you back, make, and then when, when you're not speaking, mute, and when you want to speak, unmute. All right, thank all right, you. All right. Bye-bye. So, sorry, Jeffrey. Do you want us to wait? Well, yeah, let's try to get him. Jordan. We'll give it two tries. Mr. Ron? Because we are getting a lot of feedback, especially if you're far enough away from your mic, it's not so bad, but then when... Like if we're right. close to it, we're getting that feedback really bad, and then the recording isn't worth a heck. Sounds like every time it talks, it bounces off a puddle of water. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like tweaking. It does. It sounds fun. When you're doing the video conferencing, it's a lot better. But. George, you there? Hello, George. Hello. Hello. You there? Yes, I'm here. I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you, Lloyd. Yeah, I don't know what more we can do. That's, no, that's better. Okay. That's good. That should be talked to us like that. That's good. Okay. We'll try one more. Try it a few more minutes, and then it doesn't work. I'll just hang up. Okay. So we'll try talking into our mic, but if the feedback gets too bad... Ron Jeffries is up next, and he's going to start, okay? Hi, I'm Ron Jeffries, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Thank you for your time today. I'm Ron Jeffries, the general manager of Central States Fair. I have also with me Patty Sharp. She's our finance officer and does a remarkable job for us. The request uh, cover page you see right there is a request for $187,357, which is a 2.1% increase over our last year's budget. I provided for you in backup documentation uh, numbers since 2004 indicating Penity County support. Uh, basically, we've had about 3% uh, support increase from 2014 to 18, and we're asking for a 2.1% increase for this year. The next page gives you a little bit of history about how we utilize the support from Penington County. Uh, we go back to about 2011 and give you 2011 through to 2017 of the monies that's provided by Pennington County and how that goes into buildings, grounds, equipment, utilities, insurance, uh, some Department of Corrections uh, expenses, and our gas and oil bills. Does not include any management or maintenance wages or general operating expenses. It's basically just the, the hardcore maintenance of the fairgrounds. The next page back actually gives you a breakdown of those numbers on the previous and shows you what some of those capital improvements were. This is the last year of capital improvements, and if you look at that, you'll see about uh, $44,000 that went into land improvements, mostly in electrical improvements. You'll see an additional uh, 17, almost $18,000 that went into materials to operate events, uh, fire truck, water truck, and a... Uh, 
livestock panels, and then some office equipment purchases as well for a total of about 74,000. And then the next page back gives you capital improvements from the prior year, which includes everything from asphalt repair to sprinkler heads, etc. Again, that particular year, all things included, was about 221,000. We've always felt we've been a really good bargain for Pennington County in terms of how we are able to maintain the fairgrounds property on behalf of the county and utilize it for events and activities to generate traffic to Pennington County. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions you might have. Thank you, Ron. Uh, is there any questions from Bart? Mr. Cisanto? Mr. Chair, Ron, um, why don't you give an idea of that lighting project that you, that you took care of last year What's it saving per month? Patty can give me about the, the event center lighting. Yep. Patty can actually give me a better run on that number for the electrical savings on the event center. Um, it's running probably about 20% of savings. 40% savings? 20. About 20. 20. And, and dollar figure, what would that equate um, it's to? It's about 30000 over the year. year. Mm -hmm. Over the year. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big difference. And we're, we're utilizing LED lighting on any lighting up, upgrades or replacements that we do, including the entire office, uh, stall barns, some parking lots, some arenas, as we get to them and they need to be replaced, we're converting everything to LED. And it also, um, I don't know if you've been out there, but it also improves the, uh, the experience of, of the rodeo and, and the events that are going on in that uh, event center tremendously the lighting is incredible now it's i mean you might as well be out in the sun it's fantastic miss yeah. hadcock <laughs> you want me to speak okay <laughs> um i actually am the board on the board this year and we have some exciting things coming forth we're doing a um a uh, economic impact study which I think is going to be huge. Uh, we did find donations for them, um, about 32000 And then also we're working on the building with, we had 550000 from um, the city and the building we're guesstimating so far probably about 1.2. So Correct. Um, I think the economic impact study will be helpful to raise money and show uh, people what uh, impact we have for the fairgrounds um, just a wonderful board, um, a lot of volunteers. I think Ron didn't hit on that. Um, most of our stuff is done by volunteers for maintenance on some things. And so when we're asking for some money um, from the county, I'll just tell you, um, they save hundreds of thousands of dollars and are very frugal with um, what they do with these volunteers and themselves. They have a lot of cowboys on there <laughs> that do a lot of volunteering for everything we do, or a lot of, I should say, rural people, um, cowboy, cowgirls. So I'm pretty impressed about how many people are really into ag. And you'd be surprised how some of the city people have came in and went, wow, I didn't know all this happened. And I was one of those. So. Um, I think the fairground does a lot of amazing things for Rapid City and the surrounding areas for impact, and hopefully we can prove that through the economic impact study. Thank you, Commissioner Hadcock. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Ron. you. I think uh, agree, too. You guys Thank are doing you. a good job, and the place is shaping up and looking a lot better than I've seen in years. Thank you very kindly. We appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Next to my our agenda. Uh, I am looking for alteration. Yeah. Penta County Conservation West. Lindsay. Lindsay? Mayner. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. You're welcome. I'm Lindsay Mater. I am the new district manager for the Pennington Conservation District. 
Um, I've been in my position for about a year, and I've learned a lot in that last year. Um, oh, excuse me. we got to cut him off. I can't hear a word anybody's saying. George, we're going to have to cut you off. We're getting so much feedback, we can't even hear it here. You hear? Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> You're Sorry. welcome. Um, so I've been here for about a year now, and I've seen a lot of potential for growth and improvement within the district. Um, there's a lot of potential itself within the district, and we can also leverage that with help from partners to be able to make more of an impact in our community. Uh, this is something we're working on. So our mission is to conserve the Earth's natural resources. Uh, this is especially important to me as a manager, so I'm focusing on educating people of the community and um, the youth as well. I would also like to help improve certain areas in Pennington County where there could be more work. Um, you may have noticed that a request has gone up. There's several reasons for this. Our previous employee was not utilizing some of the benefits, so she zeroed them out last year, whereas I am utilizing them like health insurance. Uh, the starting wage was also raised to be competitive when I took the position with accounts, which accounts for some of the difference as well. We have also returned to quarterly newsletters um, that have been reduced to two a year and I return it back to quarterly. So that is going to make the, or the printing and supplies jump up. Um, I've also needed training since I took this position. And so the um, travel expenses, that type of thing that's gone up to send me to uh, Sioux Falls and Heron and a few other places to get me training so I can better understand and do the job. Um, my predecessor, she was there for quite a few years, and so she took that part of the, she zeroed out the trouble out of there, so. Um, one thing I've learned from the trainings and the conferences is the importance of educating people. Again, our youth, they are the future of conservation. Um, so this coming year, I plan to visit schools. In my district, since I'm on the west, I don't know if you guys know, but the cutoff is the Cheyenne River. So um, I am responsible for of all the Rapid City School Districts, the Box Elder School District, the New Underwood School District, and the Hill City School District. And I plan to go to those schools and educate students more on conservation next year. Um, some of our other projects that we do annually is we have an annual speech contest. Last year, Pennington took first place in the state, which is pretty cool. And this year we took third place. So that's been very successful. I've had a lot of um, kids that have benefited from that. And they get, they win scholarships to go to college when they win those from the speech contests. We do poster and photo contests. We also do essay contests. Um, and then we are also help students get different types of scholarships through the conservation districts. Um, we also sell and plant shelter belt, sell trees and plant shelter belts with the machine planter. And we offer seeding services with no two no-till drills. Um, and then this year, we recently applied and were awarded $12,299 grant through the South Dakota Conservation Commission. And that will be used for um, landowners that want to complete forest health, like forest thinning, to help on wildfires in the future. Um, and we've also recently purchased a drone, and we are going to use that to get pictures and videos for educational and promotional purposes for the district. I think that a lot of people don't know that we exist and there's a problem there. Um, so I plan to put stuff on YouTube. I have a Facebook page for the district to help get the word out there. 
Do you have any other questions? No. Let's see. Uh, Mark, do you have... I do. I, Mark, he looked like he had a question. That's why I went. Right Mark, away. All right, yeah. Mark DeSanto. Um, on the info and education, yep. I saw that you've already purchased the drone, that the additional money in the budget for info and education is not for the drone. Is it for training on the drone? It would be for, like, tours and um, for me to go to schools and speak to kids. Okay. We host tours. And um, we're working on, on holding more classes for adults as well on soil health, that type of deal. When we do those, we provide lunch for them and then uh, the travel for, you know, if we need to pay people to help us put it on, whatever. Okay. Mr. Chair, follow up a little bit. Um, also, you were talking about possibly in the future using the drone, um, maybe kind of like leasing it out so you can gain some revenue or or going and filming in the future we might be we might do that use it as a service since it is commercial use i had to get a license for mm -hmm. it um which i got last week last wednesday actually so i would have to go out there and do it sure. we wouldn't be able to lease it out but i think there is potential for that i absolutely agree um, I've had people already tell me of, that have bought drones, they wouldn't have gotten them if they wouldn't have known we were going to get one. So okay. I'm excited to um, do, a, my main focus in the beginning is to do before and after seedings, plantings, the thinning grant, um, show the types of services that we have for the community and what we can offer you and what it looks like when it's done. Um, so, but yes, we may use it as a service in the future. Thank you. So, Lindsay, does anybody else want to speak first? Oh, uh, just, you know, we normally don't give too big a raises in budgets to people who have $170,000 in the bank. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask. I know you've got a list of equipment there you think you, you're you probably going to have to replace. Yeah, that's in, what the, in, the money is saved for, yeah. 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 We have different CDs designated for different types of equipment. Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. Yes, I saw that too. And... Uh, can you not take any from your capital outlay to balance your budget for this year? We could. Okay. I agree with Mr. Buskridge. You're, you've got 170000 Now I know the replacement of some of this equipment is going to cost you some money, but maybe someone could tell me the difference between east and west and a $47,000 budget. One cents, a forty nine three in east... And this one's 33. You guys, I mean, what? They cover everything east of the Cheyenne River. Okay. In Pennington County, and I do everything west of it. Yeah. So. so you can use some of your money to balance the budget out of the 170 for the difference? Yeah, the main purpose for that is for repairs, like I said, for our equipment. You never know when something's going to go down or replacing it. Yeah. We have a machine planter for our trees, and you have a list of, I think. Yeah. I, Ms. Hackock, you finished? Go ahead, sir. I would probably suggest keeping the budget the same as last year at this point in time and probably before next year uh, coming forward with probably a little more d detail of how we can even things out. You know, I mean, the reason why I say that is there is concern with that much of a big of a reserve. I think you could cover it this year and then we review it again next year. Okay. That would be my suggestion for the board. To leave it the same, Lloyd, as, as yeah. last if year. We, if we do that, 21. we need a motion to do. Chairman. Ms. Hancock. You're saying leave it at 21-7? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. 21714. Can we just put that on our list? I think we need a motion to do that, don't we? We need a motion to keep it at 21. And then put it on our list to see if everybody agrees. Or just make it today. Make it today. So moved. It's been moved to keep the same. Seconded. By, by you, second by DeSanto. Oh, you moved? I didn't. I did. Yeah. So nice seconded. seconded. Do I have a second? Thank so you. So moved by DeSanto, seconded by LaCroix. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. So do you understand what happened? Let's say, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, I think we need to get a little more clarification on the stuff but for next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> next, we come up to East, East Pennington. And oh, I don't have your names down, so we just that, need. That's good. Then you don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Eldon Helms. I'm the chairman of the East Penn County Conservation District. We want to thank you for your support that you've given us over the years. We're going to leave our budget right where or our request right where it was last year. Um, some of the things we've, we're doing is. Um, this year we planted a bunch of trees around the school and provided the trees and I think the fabric, I'm not quite sure, but so they got around the new school and wall. And they're gonna do a planting of some uh, grasses for educational purposes of the kids, natural grasses, stuff like that. And the other thing is um, our big thing this year, we've raised our bio grant. We uh, give out or we sell bugs at a reduced price to people to kill Canadian thistles where they can't spray draws around waterways and stuff like that. And we've raised that up to, well, I don't know how much, how much interest we're going to get, but we kind of raised it so that we can give out more grants for that to keep people interested in controlling the Canadian thistles. Okay. But we're going to try to absorb that through ourselves other than raise our um, budget requests. So. Does anybody have any questions for him? No. Yes, Chairman. Mrs. Hadcock. So you has as budgeted forty nine three minus fourteen six. Is that grants? Well, that's our income. That's income from sale of trees, um, renting drills. Yeah. Okay. And do you have any capital outlay or anything like the other people do? Yes, we do. Um, but some of it is earmarked to replace our tree cooler because. It's the original, <laughs> okay. and so that's a lot of the what we have in reserve is is for that purposes. So what what do you have in reserve at this point? Okay. She, um, our district manager, was not able to attend, and I thought she submitted that to you. She did not. No. Okay, I didn't see it. Um, uh, it's around about the same as theirs, about yeah. one hundred and fifty to. I'm not exactly sure. So your your capital outlay is the same as theirs, as the last the West. Yeah, approximately. I'm not going to say exactly. I'm just saying approximately. So. They're, but they're not asking for an increase. Keep no, it the same. Uh, what what we're asking for is basically pays the salary of the manager, and um, I work part time when she can't be in the office so that somebody's there to sell the trees when she's out planting the trees. And so that would just pay salaries, that's all. And there is no, we do not provide um, health insurance or anything. It is just basic salary, okay. you know, for and, our manager. And uh, we, we did raise her salary last year because she hadn't had a raise in four years, so. So Chairman. Ms. Hacker. Then I'm not in agreement with what we just did to the last people then, because I thought that was going to be different than this unless we're deciding that these guys need their 21 7 because they were asking for 33 and this is 36. That's why I stress that they've come in and not asked for an increase that they've set their budget and whereas that, that was kind of a new setup I think and 
I understand some things are changing around, but. But Chairman, do the comparables and they're about the same. That's what I'm saying, guys. Yeah, but so, uh, if I can, Mr. This, Chairman. This had got our, <laughs> you know, I don't know any, much about these, but I'm not sure we can compare the East and the West uh, with money-wise that they do the same stuff. The focus is different. And, and yeah, yeah, they really are. I mean, they're prairie and this is more trees. Uh, yeah. And although there's some prairie too, but, uh, you know, I, I know what you're saying, but I don't see that... The, the, their budgets are, are And that's equal. why there is that split because there's definitely a difference between what we focus on in the east on the east side of the river and what is focused on in the west. Yeah. So Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. So I guess that's why I kinda didn't want to vote yet. I wanted to hear both sides before I voted, but um I I don't know if I could change it, but I would have said I, I would change to no on taking the other people's money and make them use 170 because to be fair, you should do the same to these. Even if their budget's the same, um, they switched people. They told us that the difference is on them and it was 33 and this is 36 and they have comparable budgets. And again, we can say that these guys do something different, but I'm just trying to protect the other side in a sense that um, you got a new person, you got some new things happening there as well. So I don't know if I can change this uh, board's vote, but I know mine, um, I'm not in agreement with I, well, what I just voted. <clears throat> and I don't know what we do about that. It'd have to be the prevailing party you want to bring up the one before, but I think my personal opinion is I think Ron made a good point. We had the discussion with the young lady just before we closed. Uh, there wasn't a big increase in the, in these folks' budget, so it's not like it's unfair. I think there's they probably need to do some work, and they're going to come back next year with some good data. But uh, Chairman, I right was... now what we're dealing with is this one, not the previous one. So I think uh, the way we set it up was if we were going to make changes to what was presented, we we would vote on changes. Okay, so if I, we, I was the uh, prevailing party on the last one, so I don't know how we bring that back, but I would. But we're on this one right now. Yes, sir. Depending on what happens on the other one, I guess my vote would change, but. Because if you do it to one, you should do it to the other. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Out of curiosity, do you have any idea <clears throat> how many square miles are in your district? I don't know where. I, all I know, all I know is we're um, from Cine to uh, Pedro, and then from Wasta to uh, the county line, or from the Cheyenne River to the county line. I don't know the exact square miles. I thought this was on here, but it's not. I don't think it is. Oh, um, technical is this? No, that's constituents. No, I don't have square miles. Oh, okay. As I. I said, I think we need to deal with this one first, which is, uh, you're not asking for any changes. Is there, does anybody want to make any motions on this one? Seeing none, I think, thank you. Mm -hmm. It looks like now. I rescind or whatever you have what to do. What you'd like to reconsider? That'd be my motion to reconsider the West thank you. Pennington thank County you Conservation thank you. District. Sorry. So you're making a motion to reconsider yes. Pennington, County. Pennington County West. Yes, sir. Co conservative. Is there a second? I don't hear a second. Okay. So motion dies for lack of second. So, Chairman, Ms. how Hancock. do I put it on the record that I said no, that Miss Julie... You can't change a vote after it's voted. No. Duly noted. Okay, next we come up to GIS contract map. Done. Uh, 
Good afternoon. Good Don. Uh, I'm Don Jarvanen. I'm the GIS coordinator for the Pennington County Rapid City GIS, and with me is Angela Talon, who will be the GIS coordinator for Pennington County GIS uh, in a few months. Well, welcome. So, uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, cover a little bit of what we've done this year, and then uh, our budget request is, is higher this year, and I want to explain uh, the logic behind that. Uh, we're ending our, ending our 20th year of operation. I've been here uh, from the beginning. Uh, the GIS actually was formed as a, uh, a joint system between the city and county approximately 22 years ago. Um, so it's uh, been in existence uh, for a long time. I was the first hire, uh, full-time hire in GIS. Uh, so I know some of the history, at least, of the budget. Uh, we provide uh, services to uh, both city and county staff and to the public uh, through uh, our software installations, uh, data holdings, and uh, the public uh, interfaces to, like Rapid Map and some of the new ones that we've launched this year. Um, this year, uh, some of the major things that we've done that, uh, uh, at the beginning, what the public can see uh, for the County Highway Department, there are now four specialized websites uh, that we've built in conjunction with uh, uh, the County Highway Department, uh, the Adopt a Highway site. Uh, bridge and road weight limits. Uh, they have a, a site for their uh, annual uh, projects that are coming up and that are current so uh, citizens can go out and see what kind of construction is happening uh, in their area, for example. And uh, there's a, another site for traffic highway counts uh, that we put up this year for them. Uh, we also uh, maintain the voting district uh, site um, and the Rep City Park site. Uh, this year also, uh, we just completed uh, uh, the acquisition of new aerial photography, and we'll see deliverables probably, uh, uh, hopefully uh, October, um, maybe November. So that, that's uh, in, right now in a three-year cycle uh, for photography. Um, the other thing that we've begun to do is uh, with a cloud-based mapping system, uh, now uh, users can actually use their phone or tablets to collect data. And uh, we've worked with some of the city departments and the county highway department uh, is looking at, uh, they've done some of that also. Uh, county highway department also uh, just uh, signed a contract, uh, a state contract uh, with the vendor to collect their signs. And uh, the vendor is going to use uh, a LIDAR, like a vertical LIDAR, where they drive the roads um, and it collects data and they can actually see uh, the, sort of the imprint of the sign. That's how they're going to collect the data. So we'll be providing the technical support uh, for our side to get that data into the, into the system for the county. Um, we have 140 installations of our desktop software and for the first time ever, uh, there are more installations at, at county offices than city offices. We have 73 at the county and 67 at the city. Uh, it's usually been the other way around. Uh, we have in installations of server software. Uh, server software, uh, for example, holds the, where we have the data servers. Uh, that We have uh, two data servers at the city hmm. and I think two at the county. Uh, county Highway now is running uh, their own data servers and we help them with that. And then we have four web mapping servers. So that's just a little uh, summary of what, uh, what we've done this year and what we have in place. Uh, our budget request this year, uh, the entire budget request uh, from the city is $360,180 this year, uh, which is an increase of 1.2%. Uh, the actual dollar increases uh, that we've requested is uh, $4,297. Um, in, in that request, uh, our personnel costs are actually going down, but we're requesting more money in consulting services. Uh, this year, actually just uh, this last week, we completed a pilot project for surveying the section corners in the county uh, to increase the accuracy of the parcels and rapid map. And, uh, we want to continue uh, serving every year that we have money. So we've asked uh, on the city side, we've asked for an increase in that line item so we can uh, move that project forward. 
Um, the other costs that we have, uh, personnel costs, we have three FTEs, which we've had for a number of years. That's 64% of our budget. Uh, our software and hardware costs, which are most of what we, uh, that, that's sort of our operating budget, is about $87,000. Um, so this year, after 20 years of operation, um, the county has been contributing $100,000 for 20 years. Uh, I think in your packet, did you? Okay. So anyway, this is just uh, a, uh, a look at the, the, the years that I have, going back to 2011, of the uh, overall budget and then the county participation. Uh, when, the, when the system started, the budget was approximately $200,000, and the county was at, at about 50% of that. Uh, in discussions with the new county or the city budget analysts and some of the department heads, city and county, uh, we'd like to keep the county at roughly a third of the cost of the, of the direct cost of the system. Uh, with our, uh, in 2018, uh, the budget uh, percentage for the county was 278 and then with this uh, new budget request in 2019 for the city and raising uh, the county portion by $18,000, that'll put the county at 32.8%. Uh, and um, the other factor there is that uh, the county does contribute uh, uh, indirectly to the budget with uh, the lady at uh, Equalization, uh, Luann Thompson, uh, a lot of her work is done uh, maintaining the parcels. About 90% of her work goes into that, and that contributes directly to the system. So uh, with county being at a third, you have to factor in uh, her wages and benefits. Uh, so that actually puts the county probably up about 40, uh, 40 plus percent. So uh, the city uh, uh, folks felt that that was a, you know, a fair split of the system to run the system. So. Anyway, that's our request for this year. Are there any questions? Chairman. Mrs. Hadcock. I don't know if anybody's seen what Don does, but um, he's amazing um, for the city and the county. He goes above and beyond and does a lot of that work that he doesn't have to do either for our county on some of that GIS and other stuff. Um, he's very efficient what he does. And uh, again, he hasn't asked us for money for over 20 years, and um, I'm going to tell you, he's well worth every penny in his staff f for what they do in this increase. So I'm going to give him kudos for everything he's done without getting paid for for us. Thank you. Thank you. As I stated earlier, the budget as presented, if we want to change it, may take a, uh, a motion and a Change and so far I've heard nothing. That's what I'm thinking. Unless somebody else has a comment, so it looks like the board at this time is going to accept your change of 118. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Don. Thanks, thank Don. You. Thanks, Dan. You've done a good job. Yeah. Yes. It's been a pleasure working here and uh, working with you. So. Hope to work with you too. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. thank you, guys. Appreciate all you do. For this, but we can change that later. We got if it ends up being the three to two, we're all right. Or two to one. I just want to let you know that for the provisional. Yeah, but we can always change the provisional. I'll wait. Next up on the agenda is public advocate. Is it Paul? Yes, it is. Okay. I was wondering about the, the voice articulation there, but now I, when you shut the phone off, it went away. It went away. It yeah. did. I'm Paul Brank, and this is uh, Daylene Bedaloon. She's the administrator of Dakota Plains. I've uh, been with PCAP, as we call it. This is going on 17 years now. It's been a while. Uh, we've asked for a, an increase. Uh, if you note, uh, we closed 604 cases last year. The increase is helping us with the lawyers with support staff, and that's, that's crucial to getting 
the high volume that's coming now with the increase in the, the drug epidemic in Pennington County. And uh, another thing that's increased the caseload is the Van Hunnick decision, if you're familiar with that, that dealt with uh, uh, abuse and neglect cases where the, the, the parents have to be represented early on in the case, not later. So that's, that's increased our volume quite a bit. Uh, like I said, we closed 604 cases. We get the cases from the public defender's office. And they don't give up the easy cases. Most of the stuff that we get are felonies, felony matters. And a lot of individuals have multiple files. I looked this morning, just uh, I was getting ready for this. And, and last year alone, I personally had 28 matters set for jury trial that I resolved short of going to trial. And I've got 18 already this year. So that's a tremendous savings for the county, not having a jury trial, bringing in jurors and bailiffs and tying everybody up. And that's a product of going on 25 years of experience and doing this. Oh. So Paul, on your budget, you're looking at last year's was 261 right. and you're asking for 128,630 increase of 49.3%. We're asking for anything we can get, but again, as you can see, and Daylene is, is more versed with the, uh, the financials in this, but we were kind of been working at a deficit for a long time. And Dakota Plains, the agency has been covering that. And again, we, we'd like to increase our support staff. And, and truly that's what makes uh, litigation easy is when I have everything prepared and my assistant has everything prepared yeah. by the, you know, the, the support staff, <laughs> I'm able to go in and you know, I'll have 45 cases in a week and it's, you know, that the, the money is well spent, I believe. Okay, Paul. Does any commissioners have any questions? I've known Paul for a long time. And uh, how many trips to Hawaii does this include? Mm -hmm. How many trips to Hawaii does this include? None at all. You know, I've got 200 and some hours of vacation because I sell them every day. <laughs> Promises with <laughs> yeah. us. Yeah. I sell them every take off. Because... I, I'm pretty familiar with their operation, and I, they have saved the county tons of money because it, we pay them a set amount every year. Otherwise, we would be paying uh, private attorneys, and I guarantee you we wouldn't be getting the same uh, price deal as we get with them. But so you're I'm, I'm kind of prejudiced. So I'm and that's lines. true because a private attorney has no, uh, you know, benefit of settling a case or, you know, doing anything short of litigation or, or frivolous motion hearings or whatnot. So, Brian, you're, you're okay with... You recommend with yeah, the, it's quite an increase. It is. That's but what. I, I, frankly, they we probably got a pretty good deal the last few years from them. So, Miss Julie, Ms. Uh, if you look at the increase that they've presented versus the increase that we've had in the other line items for A and N attorneys and court appointed attorneys over the same time frame, this does not match what we've had to raise in those other two line items. So they are still a good deal for us if you make it in comparison to where those other two, which again, you still have no control over. Okay, thank you, Julie. Mr. DeSanto. I'm seeing in paragraph three, um, so it might be the yeah, second page, yep. um, that you took a loss over expenses of about thirty-five thousand dollars. Thirty-five percent. Thirty-five thousand. Yes. Okay. I, I would be more apt um, to vote that we give them half of the increase that they're asking for. It's going to cover the loss and then some on top of that. Um, half would be what were we looking for? One. We're looking for an increase of 128, 8, 8, 64, 49. So, 128, 
$26,000 in additional above what their expenses were last year to help defray some costs of additional. additional I'm here to take what you want to give. <laughs> um, so that would be my motion to, uh, to give them an increase of $64,000. An increase of 64 Thousand half of the one twenty eight sixty four. That'd be my motion just for discussion. I'll second it. The second for discussion. It's been a motion to offer half of the one twenty eight six thirty. So it'd be a little bit more. Right. One twenty eight. Chairman. One twenty eight six thirty. Can I speak? Yeah, I was just trying to get the numbers right for the motion. Okay. If if I could have the amount. Really. Sixty four thousand three hundred fifteen. 315? Yes. 64, 315. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay? Yeah, now you're good. Okay. So what I'm seeing in 18 is a $23,000 increase. And what I'm seeing, they were short 60000 in 17. Am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I see it being higher this year probably than they ever had in a long time because of all... Julie made a good point of all the issues that are ha happening. I don't know what that number would be, but I think it needs to be more than 60 just from previous. Does that make sense? So I don't know where this board wants to go, but and if we put it, Miss Julie, can I ask, is that okay if I ask Miss Julie? Yep. If we put it at 64, are we going to have it in our budget if they're short? Like if it's short 20,000 or I mean, what happens when... It's a contract, yeah. basically, so whatever you approve is what we'll pay them. If they have a shortage, they, they I suppose okay. they could come back and ask for an amendment to the contract, but they've not done that in the past, and I don't know if it's really allowed under the type of no, it's not. position and contract that we have with them. Actually, takes yeah. it I in. mean, really, you know, we'll, we're taking whatever we offer, you know. <laughs> Chairman, I understand that, Paul, but I also am, am listening to Julie. I'm listening to Bus Crude, and I'm thinking that your 64 half is not going to be enough, meaning they should they, – Paul just told you he works 200 hours. I mean, he has 200 hours of vacation. Not that people shouldn't work hard and give some of their time, but we also should um, treat them right for what they're, what they're doing for us. I don't know if the number, my, my guesstimate, and that's a guesstimate, is more like 85 and not 64. I, I think it's going to be at least more over half. Well, just, just throw that out there. When you added the 64,000, you're bringing them up to 325,000 from 261. So if you add another... If you make that 84,000, that's splitting the difference between your guys' motion and the issue. Issue. So I'll make a substitute of 84. Second. Substitute motion for 84, made by Hadcock, seconded by Bus Crude. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. One no from Mr. DeSanto. Oh. So it looks like you're going to get, what did I have? 261, Route 345. Thank you. Your Thank new you budget. Much. Thank Come you for you. all you do, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next year, the <laughs> I'm going to be 66 next month. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've still got a spring in your step. Yeah, you still looking pretty spry. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Doris Ann with senior citizens. Or no. I'm sorry. Anything County Council of Aging. Mm. Yeah, which right, that's good. Next one, <laughs> is it? I gotta go potty. I've advocated that we give them a raise for a few years, so <laughs> I'm, I'm all in favor of giving them a few bit more dollars. They're taking on more responsibility, and some of us people are aging, so we one of these years I'll be a senior citizen. 
Now, that is a first that we've had someone from yes. the dais speak up before you even got to present. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. <laughs> and this is April Malik. She's the new uh, director for Menelusahan. Okay. And she's uh, our new secretary as well for the Pennington County Council of Aging. So, Addie, did Addie leave? No. Rita, Rita Wagner. Rita Wagner. Addie, though, is a great assist in Menelusahan. She's been there a long time. Rita okay. Wagner was the last character. Okay. So, from the looks of it, Senior citizen support, your average budget's been 19, or requests has been for 19,446. Yes. And this year you're asking for $5,500 more. Yes. 5554 Yes, sir. They, uh, they supply the transportation tickets for a lot of senior citizens around town to get up down and and to doctor's appointments and also supply money to the various uh, senior citizen centers for new refrigerators or stoves. And I guarantee you, if you go to their meetings and you, they argue about giving $25 to somebody, so <laughs> they, they, uh, they know what, where they're spending their money. What? To keep, keep it what's set, to add it, there's no motion. So I, I hope so. I hope so. What they're so what what's just happened is you, your advocate is requesting no change to the what your request was. So your request for five fifty five more is granted if we take no motion. All right. Nobody's speaking, so I think right. it's good. Thank you very much. We appreciate all you do for us, and we'll continue to do our part. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice day. Now, did I? Okay. We had one additional request, which was for Boys and Girls Club from Ann, Annie Rogers. Did I get that right? It's Ann. Ann? I see E, and I, I don't know why I do that. It's okay. Absolutely. I'm uh, Ann Rogers Polkjoy. This is Richard Walker. We're with Boys and Girls Clubs of the Black Hills. And this is our first request to Pennington County. Um, we currently receive support from Lawrence and Fall River counties. We operate three Boys and Girls Clubs, one in Hill City, one in Hot Springs, and one in Lee Deadwood. So our home office is the Hill City office, but this request is specifically for the Hill City Club. So you would not be supporting the other two clubs. Basically, what we're looking for is your buy-in to help us support kids. It costs just $25 for an annual membership for the Boys and Girls Club, and then we charge $25 a month for kids to be part of our summer program. Our annual fee to actually, or our annual outlay to actually support those kids is $754 a child. So we are available to kids when it matters the most, but from 3 to 7 o'clock after school and from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. over the summer. We serve more than 600 kids across all three clubs. We see an average of 86 a day in Hill City. What we're specifically asking you to support is programs. So Boys and Girls Clubs see most of our programs fall in character and leadership, healthy lifestyles, and then we're expanding into STEAM, science, technology, education, art, and math. Um, when you support programs, you support everything from supplies to snacks to helping us pay the staff. When we look at our program specifically over the summer, we're working to combat summer learning loss because nearly 30% of our kids live below the poverty line. A lot of that falls on us to help them keep up with their middle class peers. By the time a student reaches the ninth grade, they could be an entire grade level behind their middle class peers. So that's something that we absolutely fight for and advocate for. We have a professional staff because we operate three clubs. We have shared staff and a management level and then Below that, each of our clubs has an individual director and what we call youth development staff. Uh, we are a chartered chapter of Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So while we don't receive specific funds from Boys and Girls Clubs, we are able to apply for grants that are earmarked just for clubs. So I think on your list, you'll see the Office of Juvenile Justice and uh, 
as one of those. So those grants come to the national office and then as individual clubs, we're able to apply to get that money. We have uh, free training through Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Usually when we send people, all we're paying is the actual, the mileage or the airfare. We're not paying to attend the conferences. A lot of our curriculum, if it's from Boys and Girls Clubs of America, comes free to us. And then we have to purchase the supplies and train the staff to use it. Um, I don't have Mr. DeSanto. Um, how many kids are attending in Hill City? I'm a, that's what they have 279 for. registered members. 279? Yep. And what's the, would you say the average weekly attendance is during the summertime? During the summer, they see an average of almost 100 kids a day. 100? Yep, just about. And Hill City is our original club, so it started as the Hill City Youth Center in the 1970s and then became a chartered boys and girls club in 2002. So it's the longest established club. And then our closest club is in Pierre. So boys and girls clubs are pretty um, spread out across the state. I'll follow up. $150 a kid. If you take the average of how many are attending a week. And really, just like the people before us, any level of support that we can garner from the county is fantastic for us. It's something that Boys and Girls Clubs of America looks for us to have. And especially when we're applying to granting agencies, which is where most of our budget comes from, to be able to show city and county support is really essential for them to have confidence in what we're doing. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Mr. Busker. Has Hill City supported you in the past? Yes. Mm -hmm. This year too. Yes. So I see you got fifteen thousand requested, but yep, they did. Okay. Generally, I think they give ten thousand. We request so across the board, we've requested fifteen thousand dollars from each of our counties and each of our cities, and then we'll see where those come back. Um, last year, we requested ten thousand from Deadwood. They came back with ten thousand. So Deadwood seems to come right up to the level of the request, but usually we see between five and ten thousand dollars less than what we request. I. <clears throat> Did you have a comment, Ms. Hadcock, before? Yes, yes, Chairman. We we always have a lot of requests, but for our youth, um, I don't know if that's a fact, but I do know my brother, I'll be in all fairness, runs a Boys Club Girls Club in Aurora, Colorado, has been in Boys Club Girls Clubs for years, um, and I also attended Girls Clubs, so... I can tell you when you don't have the money to do anything, they're huge. They're kind of like our our rural um, extension office a, for the people in the cities that do the same thing. And the programs are amazing. And I think I have told people over and over again that know me, you get horseback riding, you get things that you would never be able to do in these um, programs at the girls' club, boys' clubs. And they do some amazing stuff for kids for college and other things. So there's a lot of groups that compete for these monies, but I don't know. I on you, on the request what we should do, but I think um, if we could help them on it, um, I think they I don't think it'll be it'll be money well spent in the bottom line. Let uh, you want one more comment. Sure. Good. So being part of a national organization guarantees the quality of our programs. So basically we are we ha are overseen on a regional level and then on a national level. So we are subject to safety safety inspections every year. Our staff has to be completing and ascending through a leadership academy. We have to be qualified at a certain level. We have to pay our staff at a certain level. So what we do is really highly regulated so that we are able to offer those high quality programs that are available to us free of charge through Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So across the board, youth centers are incredibly valuable, but a Boys and Girls Club puts a stronger guarantee behind that than an independent facility might. I'm my my two cents is there is no doubt that what you guys do is good i mean there's multiple agencies out there that are doing great things and you can tell by my mailbox by when i go to the mailbox i'm getting lots of requests and, and the youth i think is we you we got great support with it in our community that we all want to really help my personal opinion, 15,000, you know, once we start this, it's hard to take it away. And, and that's the problem. Once we do it with you, 
three more are going to come next year. That's what I want to caution the group with. I see you've got some great people on board. I mean, you've got the, you know, you're getting 56 from committed, the wharf mining, you get, I mean, you got some, and the rest are all requests that I see so far. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not sure where this board wants to go with this. I just wanted to get my two cents in there before they throw something out. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm going to be up straight. Um, usually we don't, we have enough subsidies through our other organizations that we have in here. And I totally support what you guys are doing, but I'm in agreement with Lloyd as much as I have to say this. And I'd also like, if you could, if you do come back next year, I'd like to see what your budget is. Because a lot of my brothers, what he does is he raises it through the community, meaning uh, not off the, the counties and the cities. He has a team, the Broncos sponsor him. People sponsor their boys club, girls clubs. And he raises money through that instead of asking county and cities in some, not all cases. Right. So we have an $835,000 operating budget. We're asking you to contribute less than 2%. Okay. So we're going to, this year, we're going to raise $150,000 in private donations. Okay. You know, one of the, one of the bad things that we don't really have and what a lot of agencies do is, uh, an application, a request form. Right. I, I don't think, do we, Holly? I mean, for for subsidies, you know, like the John T. Verkovich Foundation, you they have a, a list of requirements that you have, and I, I hate to start throwing things forward when really if we're going to go this route, that's what we should do. Yeah, and we Which, do currently have a hundred and fifteen thousand dollar request into the Verkovich Foundation. Yeah, see, there's quite a bit. So. Not to discourage you guys or anything like that, but the, the sense that I'm getting is I don't think we're going to approve the 15000 for this year. Any, I don't know if that's... Yeah, any amount of money is helpful. Like I said, we're, last year we requested 10000 from Lawrence County. We pulled 5000 Last year we requested ten from Fall River, pulled ten. But if we were able to pull $15,000 total from our three counties, that's the level of support that we need to be able to give to those granting agencies to say, yes, there is community buy-in. It's not just individual donors. It's our cities and our counties that also say, these kids matter. So really, we look to be able to use matching funds and magnet oh, yeah. dollars, and that's really critical to being able to access those other funds that we are absolutely applying for all the time. Yeah. But Chairman, if I could, With, without being discouraging, we do have extension and other things that we support mm -hmm. that is more the rural community. We don't really go, if I'm correct, into the city subsidies as much, and we had decided that a while ago, and that doesn't have to be the board's. Uh, decision now, but um, we also have health and human services and other things that we contribute, and they're huge for us. So we do give back to the community and in those organizations one way or another that, whether it be Boys Club Girls, or the same people that you're serving, it's just not through your organization. That's why a lot of times I have a hard time subsidizing things outside of our county. Well, we're in your county, so we're only asking for funds for Hill City. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we already received funds from Lawrence and Fall River to support Lee Deadwood and Hot Springs. Okay. And as my colleague quite rightly says, any amount that you could possibly give, even if it's nowhere near the fifteen thousand, at least it would it would go a long way to help in the grand scheme of things. Um, I've only been with the club uh, the last six months as the resource director. Um, I've been very fortunate to see what the clubs actually do, and I know you all appreciate that. Um, I'm responsible for the fundraising, so I go out and we, we do all these wonderful things to try and bring money in to directly benefit the children. Um, so as my colleague quite rightly says, anything you could give, if it was 5,000, we would be eternally grateful for that. So again, in your consideration, uh, we would certainly ask for your help if you can. Okay. Mr. Chair, oh, thank you. Mr. I have one suggestion. I, you know, Deb pointed out, and I know this happens in many of the of the uh, municipality areas where boys and girls club are at, looking for money. Have you guys spoken to uh, the Rapid City Rush, for example, to get a fundraiser for the boys and girls club? Have a, a rush night that. So the Rapid City Rush supports the club for boys. 
And so the club for boys was a boys and girls club until the 1980s when, well, they were a boys club until girls came in and then they wouldn't take girls. So they lost their affiliation. But in Rapid City, Rapid City has stayed extremely loyal to the boys club. So we don't do as well in Rapid City fundraising because of the club for boys. Okay. So that's, so the rush, we were able to get um, in-kind support from them. Like we got some t-shirts last year, which was really delightful, but that doesn't go very far towards helping your bottom line. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Do you have something you want to I think at this point, this was a request for 15,000. I have heard no other options besides that. So I think, uh, I think we need to take a vote on the request. Very well. Unless somebody has an, a, sub, an, a motion to make. Nope. Seeing none, all in favor of the $15,000 request for uh, the Boys and Girls Club indicate aye. All opposed? Aye. aye. Can I ask a quick question? So we've never been able to apply for funds, and this year we were. So is the reason that we weren't able to apply is that you weren't going to fund youth groups in general? Do you know why? Because we're both fairly new. Right. Yeah. But our executive director let us know that they'd never been able to get a funding request into Pennington County. And just because we're funded in our other counties, that was something that we were really trying to advocate for. Is this not something that we should be pursuing in the future? No offense intended at all, no, but just as no. far as you are asking a wonderful time. question. That's why I was just bringing up, well, you know. Boards change. Yeah, boards change. But I mean, really, it, we're not in the business of, of being a grant. Uh, right. facility so that that's why we don't have anything like that so usually you, if you, that's something you want you talk to Julia you talk to our administration you set up on the agenda and do just as you did you know we're that's why I suggested the John V for Kervich and YFS and all these other people that's they do do but they come and they'll come to our regular meetings and ask for money so, so, it's, so we could request money for individual projects or events, but not to become part of your budget? Is that? No. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I don't. So we absolutely, and I'm not arguing, but so we have an $835,000 operating budget. We're pulling less than $50,000 from our municipalities. Clearly, we're, you know, doing a lot of work to apply through these other foundations, and we're meeting that budget. We have a balanced budget every year. So is there any situation in which it would be appropriate for Boys and Girls Clubs of the Black Hills to ask for money from Pennington County? You can ask all you. <laughs> you can tell me no. I'm just really trying to, you know, to kind of streamline the way that you we could, do this. Absolutely. This process starts in April of every year. Yep. It's when budget requests come in. So any entity can come and certainly sure. ask. We've always been open for um, budget submissions. Okay. Um, like they said, boards change and priorities change. And sure. I know years and years ago they did more kinds of, um, but government, our mandates keep getting, you know, jails sure. and courts. And so they've, they're at the point now where they have to focus more on the required mandated okay. services. Absolutely. And so the remaining money is, is a lot tighter How and, and harder to compete for. Sure. I think you made a good point, but I think what she's kind of talking like on special events because the city used to have has a contingency fund where right. people all of a sudden will come in and put on the agenda. We got this event. Could you help a fund for $5,000? Right. And the city council has the decision to whether they can pull from that. We don't really do that. Do that. Okay. Okay. Hear me. Yeah. Ms. Hadcock. I'll just tell you, this is my philosophy. When... Because we have extension youth here and we fund that. We have conservation, we fund that. I look at it more of a rural when I give um, or we have things, things that are mandated, of course, is our courts like like they said. But we only have so much pot of money. Sure. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's what we're trying to tell you, too, that if we're going to put it, a lot of times we have that program kind of like you guys do through the extension. We give them like 89 thousand and then they get some from the state the conservation is part of what we do in the rural areas it's not that that you're doing anything bad by asking or coming forward it's a good thing but it's just what is the um what is the philosophy of the board at the time okay i'll just tell you up straight 
Um, right now, it's a lot of the egg stuff is what we're doing. And not that you're not doing any egg because that's Hill City. Yeah, we do with a tremendous kids. amount of nutrition education. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. But um, bottom line is, too, my brother does a lot more fundraising. I know it's a bigger area and a bigger city, but he does tons of fundraising as well. And that's where he gets, I think, most of his financial backing. We do, too. We get more than 90% of our budget through fundraising. Thank you, ma'am. So, all right. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Chair, I didn't catch that motion. The motion, is it's not in our budget. It was a request. So I asked, uh, the request was for 15000 So we took a vote. To, were we going to allocate 15000 on the budget? Or deny. Or deny. We denied it. And we denied. Who made and seconded the motion? Nobody did. I think Lloyd made the motion and I seconded it. Okay. Yeah. I remember. I, I think that's what. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Julie, it's been suggested that uh, the commission may be ready to consider provisional budget with what you presented. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I just heard the interest, so I'm not quite sure what if it's all the employee or employee requests. Uh, try to keep the reserves at 19 percent, so that would make it what, help me out here, please. Yeah, I, you want to address the issues that need to be settled. Well, it's going to be. I think you're going to have to. Cut. We reduced it a little bit from what was presented. Just yeah, the only slightly, one, but not slightly. It it won't make effect. Won't make. So I'm thinking, uh, move to accept the four building and grounding grounds employees, the eight detox, uh, three law enforcement. That's a negative three. Negative three. minus three. Those. One for planning, and we know where the funding's coming from for that. Two for the state's attorney, four for dispatch. Uh, direct the staff to make uh, across the board cuts of 1.75 to 2.55. Do we, yeah. we, we gotta make one, one or the other, other don't we? It, it, um, the 2.55, that's the range. Yeah. So if you tell me that, um, you want to, if this passes, to approve all the FTEs, to set reserves at 19%, not to use any CPI, I can go in with the changes made to date, which the only one today was the 84000 yeah. contract. Then I will take it in, and it will be closer needs to the 2.55. And we also reduced conservation number. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it'll be closer to that one. And then with those others, then I can tell you what that reduction will be. So the, you just need a motion or a direction to do that? or If you want to approve it today or you want me to bring it back. Is it legal I to prove it today? <clears throat> Julie? Yeah. Mr. DeSanto. I think we were talking um, we weren't going to approve anything until we had our special meeting on FTEs. But we could, direct, we could direct her to do this. We can direct her to do this, but I don't, I don't think we should be voting on a provisional. I mean, we should. We can direct you to. So you want me to prepare a draft yeah, with so. these changes to tell you what that percent or reduction would be? Yeah. Yes. And, I can but, do that. But here's, here's I get a question. There is a health care clinic. I think we can reduce that one. But insurance, I you know, you and, and this budget summary, you have a 2.55% tax cut in insurance, and I don't think we can do that. This isn't that, that's kind of a contractual. Yeah. We better look at that one. Uh, mental health center of behavior management, that's set by statute. I don't think we can reduce that one. No, there's a few in there that we would not reduce. Yeah. The, um, uh, one more was the bond payments and stuff. Yes, but we would take it out of the 800000 CIP. Okay. You, 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 yeah, I've already kind of talked. Uh, yeah, the, the contracts that are in, um, 
would be about it. Yeah. yeah. But we would make equal cuts to the non-general fund also. Okay. So I'm assuming we need a motion. You can just direct me and I can come back with it because you're not going to do a vote. Okay. If, or okay. if you want a motion no. okay. to direct me to do that, I think I understand it. But she knows what to do. We don't need a motion. Okay. You know what you're doing. <laughs> now we need to... Well, oh, go ahead. need to set what date you want to reconvene. Yeah. Recess, recess 2. Hold on a sec. Is anybody... Go ahead. We don't want them to cut it from fire. Guys, we already reduced the budget. They don't. You do haven't touched the fire, fires, no. county fire budget. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So when we got to figure out a date. When are you leaving for good here? Twenty eighth, last day. Okay, so we got to do it before the twenty eighth. We have next Tuesday. Next Tuesday or Wednesday in the morning. Anybody got Tuesday morning open? I can do Tuesday. I can. I can. Screwed. Get You're cutting morning. into my golf pretty serious. You're cutting into my work. Cutting into my life. <laughs> What's more important, golf or work? You put it golf, back. golf. <laughs> okay, Tuesday morning it is. What time? Clock? Nine. We good with that, Lloyd? I'm fine. Bus, I mean, hey. bus crew. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. The Santo. I can probably get it out today. Yeah, cool. today so that you'll have, I'll send it to Holly. Thank we you. need a motion on setting that date. Holly. Let's just yes, do it. Let's you recon, it. yeah. You recess, recon, to, uh, recess uh, until that date. So I'm these moving. are all continual meeting minutes. Okay. Right. I move to reconvene on Tuesday, the twenty sixth Six. at nine a.m. Yep. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.